Good evening, everybody, and welcome outside the GCU Arena. I'm Kyle Borg. We'll be joined by Jack O'Hara, Cheyenne Rose, and Ryan Wynn shortly, and you're watching the pre-pregame show. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. What is a pre-pregame show? Well, tonight it's a behind-the-scenes look at everything that happens leading up to the Lopes pregame show with Barry Butel, Scott Williams, and Kate Longworth, and then leading up to tip-off as we get ready with the pep band right behind me. You see a crowd filing in as well. They're doing their little pep rally before they let the greatest party in uh, college basketball into the arena as they get set to take on the New Mexico State Aggies. Well, we'll go ahead, take a look at the tailgate going on behind me. We got the alumni and season ticket holder tailgate, and then, of course, the tailgate for the Havocs. And with the Havocs, you can uh, have some food, place some cornhole, maybe a giant Connect Four, and even uh, just watch the pep rally get around. And now I'll be joined by the two Tanners, co-presidents of the GCU Havocs. And uh, Tanners, what makes the GCU student section the biggest party in college basketball, and why is it such a tough environment to play in? Oh, it's all in the students, man. They are dedicated. They're energetic. They're keeping out here since Tuesday night ready for this game. So just the energy they bring, the community that Havoc brings, and them just wanting to be around each other, make new friends, and then it's all fun and games once they go inside. I like what he said, the Havocs are all about community. We come out here, we hang out, we form meaningful relationships with each other, and that just shows in there when we're all able to come together, get super loud, have a good time. A lot of fans aren't even basketball fans. They just come out because the Havocs are so crazy. Any predictions tonight? I think it's going to be a big game. There's going to be a lot of energy. Our team's going to feed off of it. Shots start falling. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Basically, I agree with what he says. There's going to be a lot of energy. Hopefully, we can be the ultimate sixth man for the team. Absolutely. You heard it from the two Tanner Co-Havoc presidents first. It's going to be a good one here tonight. And, of course, they said people have been coming out since Tuesday. And including some today have been out in line since 8 a.m. this morning. They are ready to go. They've been out here all day. And now let's go ahead give you a closer look and listen in at the pep rally as the band, cheer, and dance teams are performing. Well, that is the Lopes pregame prep rally, and now we'll go ahead and send you inside down on the floor with Jack O'Hara, Cheyenne Rose. Well, thank you, Mr. Kyle Boar. We're already rocking and rolling here tonight, Cheyenne, as we welcome you inside the GC Arena. We're courtside. The Havocs, of course, really uh, partying out there, out in the tailgate, as Kyle was alluding to. And, of course, the fans should be piling in here, filing in that is, here in a few moments. Of course, our DJ Austin getting ready as well. The players behind us putting in their early work. Coach Dan Marley and his staff getting ready for a very exciting matchup, Cheyenne, as the Lopes, for the first time in three years, of course, they lost 72 to 52 here in Las Cruces just a few weeks ago to this Aggies team looking to take care of business here at home for, again, the first time in nearly three years. Absolutely. The biggest conference rival in New Mexico State. But, you know, the team's ready, the fans are ready, and the Havocs are definitely ready, Jack. Of course, the Havocs going to be filing in here any moment. Of course, there's a lot of special guests. Frankie Munez, of course, the star of Malcolm in the Middle. He's been here a few times this season, rumored to be here tonight. Don't take my word for it, though. Of course, everybody's rocking and rolling. We got Austin here 
almost the best DJ in America here, you could say here, Austin, of course. What do you got on tap for tonight, of course? Very special game against New Mexico State. Any Anything different on the playlist? Yeah, we got a really awesome intro for you guys tonight. Uh, I'm really excited about it. It's a little bit of a darker theme. We call it the Purge versus New Mexico State. We're going to go lights out, and it's going to be a really awesome show for you guys. And, uh, of course, do you have any uh, special requests? Take any special requests? Always, man. Uh, the players often give me lists of songs that they love, and uh, I try to play them to the best of my ability. So. A little uh, Sweet Caroline? Oh, I think marching band's got you covered on that one, man. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you, Austin. That is Austin again, best DJ in America right there here inside the GCU arena. Of course, Discover's here as well. GCU Discover, a two-day trip. They get flown out here, get to meet and greet with some students as well as you take a look here on the court here. And, of course, you were a part of that Discover trip as well, Cheyenne, last summer. Absolutely. It was a really great experience. It's a great way to see the campus, learn from students, and meet new people before you even come to GCU. And it's a really great way to get connected early on. I wish I would have had that experience. Didn't quite that exper get, get that experience, Cheyenne, coming here to GCU. Obviously made the right choice as you take a look here. As you can see, the Havocs starting to file in a little bit. You can see the pep band getting ready as well up here. And of course, again, another great, I gotta give all, credit to where credit's due here with Austin. Again, best DJ in the game today as we'll take a look. You wanna take a look at what exactly happens inside GCU Arena during warmups with the players? I think I'm ready. Let's take a sneak peek here at what happens here during the pregame show. All right, guys. Hey, guys. So my name is Ryan. I have the great pri privilege of getting to show you guys what it's like to live here on campus. You can see what an apartment looks like. But I actually want to uh, highlight over here. This is GCBC, our very own coffee shop. We actually sell coffees, teas, lemonades, even a stampede. It's our very own energy drink. Probably one of the most popular drinks here. A really cool spot right before those basketball games. People will come here, get a stampede, kind of hang out with their friends. It's a really cool social hub here on campus. GCBC will go all out. Sometimes we have events where we'll even decorate that area for our Midnight Madness prep rally. We had a giraffe. University and they decked it out with a ton of jungle vines so it was pretty cool um, but you can see here this is our apartment uh, showroom this is exactly what you get if you live in an apartment uh, we're pretty spoiled here on campus I actually got to live here myself in Roadrunner it's right next to all the action next to the arena so pretty popular spot here on campus um, very prestigious uh, we ranked number six in the nation by niche.com for best college university uh, dorm so uh, and rightfully so you can see you get everything here um, over here in the kitchen all the main appliances fridge freezer electric stovetop, the oven, the microwave, the broiler, and sink, and lots of pantry space as well. Um, you have a lot of really cool uh, space for your living room as well. We've turned this into a, a, a movie kind of studio ourselves. We have our sectional. We even have a projector hooked up. So we've gotten to do a lot with the living room. It's a ton of fun. You as a student will get to create whatever environment you want, whether you want dining room tables, couches, things like that. So it's pretty sweet living here on campus. I'm not going to lie. I'm very spoiled. Um, you'll even have your very own room so you can see inside. Um, pretty sweet setup. You'll have your own bed, a built-in desk. Uh, you can bring your own dresser, any chairs like that. You'll have your own walk-in closet as well. So a lot of amenities that not a lot of universities get to give their students. Uh, we get a lot here on campus. Uh, but by far the best part about living here on campus is going to be your very own restroom. So you will not have to worry about a shared university floor restroom. You get your very own restroom. So you have your own sink, vanity, a medicine cabinet, more pantry space, believe it or not, and your very own restroom. So you got a walk-in shower, a toilet. It's the whole package, everything you could ever ask for in a dorm. It really makes it homey here. I've enjoyed living here on campus. I started out in a dorm, um, lived in an apartment, and it's been a really great experience. I'm originally from Southern California, so GCU has been, um, honestly, my home from home, and I really have to credit that to all the housing and everything they provide for us in amenities. Um, so that's our apartment showroom. I'm going to take you back outside where we get to uh, link up and talk a little bit more um, about tonight's game. Cool. So Roadrunner is kind of in the center of all the action is. We have our very own GCBC here right next to the game, and we're actually going to head back over there. So, Speaking of GCBC, Ryan, what is your favorite drink to get at GCBC? Uh, great question. So I'm going to say it's probably a stampede with coconut, lavender, and breve. So it's this really light drink, uh, great for energy, though. It's a good pick-me-up. But Stampede, you can never go wrong with those. Never go wrong with GCU's own energy drink, yeah. Stampede. And what does lavender taste like? I've always kind of wondered. It's uh, very sweet, almost like a vanilla, not too strong, but uh, it's pretty mild. So I appreciate the coconut more. So, yeah. Absolutely, definitely. So 
Ryan, is there anything else that you would kind of like to add about GCU campus as a whole or just anything else about uh, apartment living? Yeah, you'll know, we get to see a lot of the culture here just with the uh, lawn that we have. We, I mean, we have people camping out. Uh, people will go crazy for these games, and that's really just the culture we have here on campus. I've been super grateful to be able to see all of that here. Um, but really, just getting to explore the campus would be great yourself. You can always schedule a tour with us through gcu.edu and uh, schedule those tours. So, ton of fun. You can hopefully take a tour with uh, someone like myself. So you can always do that. We're going to head this way. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I mean, you'll get to see all the students. It's all student-driven. We even have our very own Havocs leaders. You guys got to see Tanner uh, up there uh, just doing what they love. So um, you'll find a lot of different opportunities to get involved here, but basketball games are definitely the hallmark of where all the student leaders get to interact with each other. How many uh, basketball games have you been to? Quite a few, maybe a couple? So I actually work all the basketball games. I get to work check-in. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. I do my student worker position, and I get to do that. But my sophomore year, I went to every single game as a Havocs All-Access member. I got a jersey, pop socket, socks. Um, a hat. Um, it was definitely worth the experience. So my sophomore year, I was hardcore, but since I got a job, I've been working check-in. So a ton of fun still. Still still getting all the experience of the in-game uh, arena and atmosphere. Oh, yeah. Even just being outside every now and then, you still hear all the energy that goes on yeah, and just all of the fun. And now off to my right is the alumni tailgate that we kind of talked about a little bit earlier, but now you can kind of see what really goes on. All the alumni season ticket holders kind of come out here just hang out a couple hours before the game starts at about 4 30 they got food rides you can see a papa shot it's a it's a great time for with your family friends some excited uh future havocs already out here you can see right there a couple of lopes ups the havocs are uh getting let in mo as we speak actually starting to get that process going but first Let's go ahead. We're going to stop by inside the alumni tailgate really purple quickly. Kind of show you around just a little bit. But you'll be after purple too. So we got food over here to our left right behind me. More food. I believe it is a chicken tenders of some sort it looks like tonight and pizza as well. Some cookies for dessert, no water, cheating, waffles, cheating. chicken and waffles right here actually. We can take a look at that. Some chips. Good combination chicken and waffles if you are in the alumni tailgate this evening. And also far to our right is the Havocs. They're getting let in as we speak. So the rush of students okay, purple three, put your hands in is being the unleashed upon the arena. Purple three, you're going to be. So now we are going to go ahead. We're going to get back back inside the arena start Purple making our way right back that direction Next is gonna be green one. so if any of you uh, alumni are out there watching this you can uh, always check out the alumni season ticket holder tailgate green out one. here on the Whatever quad the guys, go in front of GCU green arena one. So when we get back into the arena, we're going to go ahead and we're going to hand it off to Cheyenne Rose, who's going to be standing by with Kate Longworth, who hosts the Lopes pregame show, which we're getting you set for right now as we speak. And you can see just a couple of the buildings, the Jerry Colangelo Museum off to my far right in the back corner there, right next to the arena and the practice facility. And of course... We got our good Havocs again. There they go. A little bit more tame going in tonight, it looks like. As they normally uh, kind of run in to the arena, but it looks like they're making sure that everybody's safe as it is going to be a packed house here this evening. And we're going to take a look at the next group being let in. Quite a few Havocs here tonight. Probably going to fill up most of the student section, if not more than all of it. You can see public safety here doing a fantastic job keeping everybody safe, making sure nobody is in the way as they get ready to unleash the Havocs. Making sure they get the entire groups in. Okay. 
And here they come, the GCU Havocs running in to the arena. As we enter inside the arena alongside the Havocs, we're going to veer off to the right as they're going to veer off to their left and go into the student sections. And we're going to go up the escalator to the Lopes pregame show set where we will catch up with Cheyenne Rose and Kate Longworth. As we uh, head up the escalator here inside the arena. And up here behind us, we're going to have some of the concession stands, some food. Canyon Pizza Company is going to be up here as well, handing out some slices, getting people fueled up and ready to go for the game here tonight. As you can see outside now, that is the concourse outside of GCU Arena, getting ready to go as we are off the escalator now and ready to hand it off to Cheyenne Rose, who will be joined by Kate Longworth. Cheyenne. Thanks, Kyle. So we're going to get a behind-the-scenes look at Kate Longworth's perch above the basketball hoop in Section 110, where she does her pregame interviews. So let's take a look now. So they just set it up, and she just came up here. And so we're going to get a look behind the scenes of what goes on for the pre-game before, after our pre-pre-game. Excuse. Uh -oh. <laughs> so up here we have a great setup, and as you can see, a great view of the court from up here. So you can see the Havocs finally started to fill in, and a little behind the scene actions of Kate getting ready before for her pregame after our pre pregame. You can see the uh, both teams warming up, and you can see that GCU student section really starting to fill up here tonight for the biggest conference game and conference rival, New Mexico State. questions for our pre-pre-game before you get ready for your pre-game? So, with this being the biggest conference matchup with New Mexico State, was your game prep any different? Um, we, in our production meeting, yeah, we talked a lot about different scenarios, what we think will happen if and when they pull off the upset, how the students will react, how we want to handle our pre-game, who we want to talk to in a situation like that. And for me, I think I was just really excited because I remember I covered a couple years back when the Lopes upset New Mexico um, State here, and it was really, really excited. I got to interview Dan Marley on the court. The crowd was rushing him, and I've covered some big football, Super Bowl games. I've covered World Series, but that was one of my favorite interviews ever. Dan Marley literally said, I don't know what you're saying, but I'm living the dream, so I'm hoping for part two tonight of that, because it's always fun to cover our winning team. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And as you mentioned, the atmosphere being absolutely crazy with that game, and we know the Havocs is the best student section in the nation. And I have highly doubt that it's going to get any quieter with this game coming in. Agreed. I mean, I talked to the players, and I don't think you ever hear a press conference without Dan Marley mentioning that six man and how they have a factor here. And in fact, whenever I interview someone who's coming to watch the game tonight, I'll be interviewing the D-backs manager, Tori Lovello. I asked him, he was a college baseball player, you know, what does it mean to an athlete to have this kind of support behind him? And he says it feeds into their game. You know, you think of Archie Bradley. He's one of those guys who's all about energy. He came out to a game like this, and he said... This is what, if you're an athlete, you strive for. You want to hear the fans behind you. You want them to feel part of the action. And then, in turn, 
you want to go out there and kind of gift them back with a win. And I heard a lot of the Lopes players talking about that tonight, that that's what they want to do for the student section. Well, thank you so much for your time. We'll let you get ready for your pre-show as we send it to Kyle and Jack on the field with Barry and Scott. Thank you so much. No So close, Scott almost. Again, the Lopes are undefeated when Scott makes his half-court shot. They're 1-0 this season so far as we welcome you back inside the GC Arena. The Havocs have finally filed in here as, again, it's a packed house here in this as we have both Scott Williams, three-time NBA champion in the house. I was going to go out there and hit one of these half-court yeah. shots because every time I hit a half-court shot, the Lopes always win. I was just saying that. You're ten, a lot of, 10 attempts, I was 0 for 10. That's not a good sign. You're a lot taller than I thought. <laughs> I gotta be honest. I look smaller on TV, right? Oh yeah, totally. You and Barry look like you're the same size over here. Look, I mean, look at the look at the four of us. Just styling, profiling, limousine riding, jet flying. We don't do any of that stuff. All right. But so you got a prediction on the score tonight? Score tonight. I am going 72-69. Lopes up. I got the, yeah, good two good defensive teams. I like that. I think it's gonna be a close game. Lopes keep it close in the first half. Second half, they have to come from behind and have them win in this one, 77-73. Who's leading the charge? I like Carlos Johnson and Blackshirt. Oh, wow. Who do you like, Kyle? I like the Lopes by five. They're going to lead the entire way, oh, and Laver's five. dropping 30. Laver's having 30. That would be good. Laver hey, with 30. Wow. Spaniard, so that would be great. If the Laver can get 20 to 30, 20 to 30 points, Guaranteed a Lopes victory. And again, I like Carlos Johnson yeah. for 20. I like Blackshear for 15, and we need at least 15 to 18 off that bench tonight. Looking to slash and dash in the paint as well as we welcome in Barry Butel too. Barry, just talking about the again, bench score. We yeah. need 15 to 18 off that bench tonight. Oh, for sure, yeah. The bench wow. Spot. I mean, look at us. I mean, in your 20 plus years of experience, where do you uh, compare a GCU men's basketball game against New Mexico State compared? I don't know, calling Minnesota Wild games. Well, this one's probably right near the top for sure. Yeah, this this uh, this has a whole different level of intensity. You can feel it already, oh, yeah. right down here. Oh yeah, I can. Yeah, when they we, even when they, when New Mexico ran right by us, New Mexico State. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you just felt uh, an intensity in their eyes, certainly from the Lopes. I mean, everybody's dialed in for sure. Now, where do you compare this crowd compared to, uh, I don't know, like the Dolphins or well, the, the Wild? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, it's right there. And even, you know, all the NBA players, and Scott included, I mean, it, he, there's no better atmosphere definitely in Phoenix than right here at GCU Arena. I mean, have the Havocs, the, the crowd atmosphere, the music, everything. Now, I'm interested to hear this. So let's say final seconds of the game, fourth quarter. Tie game, buzzer beater shot. What's Barry Butel's game winning calls of the Lopes defeat the Aggies? Uh, that is that is just a spontaneous, right? Right? Am I going to have to tune when in? You're calling a game, yeah. you know, it's all about the emotion, how the crowd reacts to it. Uh, everything is just kind of off the cuff. What's been your favorite call so far this season? Wow. Yeah, this year's, Good question. Been, a, this year's been a little bit of a roller coaster ride yeah. as far as a lot of the threes, three point shots. Um, usually at clutch times. I think the, the Jenkins uh, shot that uh, was near the buzzer there was so unpredictable. That was strong. That's top of mind. Um, but uh, usually it's usually the ones that are near the buzzer. Yeah. I like it. What, what, what do you think is going to be the expectation going in tonight, obviously? What do you think is going to have to change for the Slope team to bounce back after that 20-point loss in Las Cruces a few weeks ago? Well, you know, talking to uh, Coach Molly this week, it's all about defense. Uh, you know, they averaged 84 and a half points per game in the last two games, but unfortunately they gave up over 90. So their defense has to show up here. They have to put pressure on the ball. Three-point shots, New Mexico State has hit 29 in the last two games. They are lethal from beyond the arc. Uh, they can shoot, they can score, and they have depth, so the intensity level has to be ratcheted up big time. Now, of course, your call is going to be spontaneous. What would your call be, just to put you on the spot here, Mr. Kyle Borg? It's, it's got to be spontaneous. You can't script these things, Jack. It's just whatever pops into your head first, you know? It's just... It's okay, gotta be. What, what who set say? me what up with you, the situation? What would you say? Boom goes the dynamite. Christmas has come early here in Phoenix. The Lopes tramp the Aggies, 72 to 69. Game winning three point shot at the buzzer from Carlos Johnson. How do you like that? I love that. Christmas he loves it. Down. Christmas <laughs> is early. Boom goes the dynamite. Very original. Thank you. Yeah, very nice. 
I, got I tried. One. I got one. I'll steal Al Michaels from 1980, Lake Placid. Well, give it to us. Do you believe in miracles? Yes. Yep. 40 years That's ago. a positive. That's a positive. As we uh, get ready here for the pregame show here, of course, Barry Butel here with us as we get ready. Fox Tenetra, you can catch the game as well as with Michael Potter and Paul Coro on 1580, the Fanatic, as we get you ready inside here in the GC Arena as we turn it over to Cheyenne out in the, out in the uh, truck. Cheyenne. Uh, yeah, I love this song. So we are in front of the best student yeah. section in the nation. Yeah. And I doubt it's gonna get any quieter here tonight. Oh, because as you can hear, I can't even hear myself. Let's go. You by Stampede, the upper one drink of GCB. I doubt it's gonna get any better. So now we're gonna go along to the truck where everything takes place. And as we see, they're definitely ready for this game here tonight. As you can hear, I can no longer hear. Are you guys ready for the game? Question, it's gonna be the greatest team in the Western Athletic Conference, the Grand Canyon versus the Antelopes. Oh. Go GCU! Go Lopes! Go Lopes! Let's go! That's right! Lopes up, baby! As you can hear, they are ready for this game here tonight. And you know, I don't think they've been loud enough. Can you guys be any louder? Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! And so now we're going to have, let's go see if we can find a few more Havocs over on this side. So I asked them down there, who do you guys think is going to win this game? GCU! Go Okay, do you guys think that you can be louder than them? cheerleaders and dance team do their pre-game ritual here and let's see if we can just listen in to what they do to get ready for a big game like this are you guys ready for the game yeah. <laughs> okay so I was asking the Havocs who they thought was gonna win this game who do you guys think is gonna win the game We're gonna head now to the truck to send things off to Kate, Barry, and Scott as we see the production truck where everything really happens here. So let's go take a look. So we're going to wrap up our pre-pre-show, sending it to Kate, Barry, and Scott for their pre-show as you guys get an inside look of the truck.
The countdown to game time is on. Good evening and welcome to one of the biggest games of the season. It's that date that's been circled on the calendar before the season even began. Tonight, fans gathered out on the quad ready to march into GCU Arena. In fact, students have been camped out all week long waiting for this game as the Lopes host the first place Aggies right here at GCU Arena. Kate Longworth, welcome you in to the Lopes Free Game Show, coming at you live here on Fox 10 Extra on this rivalry Thursday as GCU looks to upset New Mexico State tonight in a big way. And hey, we know it can happen because why? It has happened here before where the Lopes have gone out there and stud the competition in the Aggies. And I'll tell you what, if you take a look at the WAC standings, this certainly is the team to beat. New Mexico State in first place with a perfect 13-0 record. In fact, if you look at their uh, record dating back to last year, they have won 28 straight conference regular season games. Cal Baptist, obviously not eligible for the tournament to play next year, or next month rather, because of their eligibility as they make that Division I transition, which means your Lopes are fighting for that number two seed with Seattle University. And now as we set the stage for the big game ahead, we welcome in the rest of our broadcast team, Barry Boutel and Scott Williams coming at you. And guys, I know this is a game we've been waiting for, high expectations on the line, and you know Dan Marley has this team ready to go. What are you anticipating? Yeah, anticipating a high-intensity game, one in which I know Coach Marley wants to see some defense because that has been missing on the last road trip where they... They scored 84 and a half points, Scott, but they lost both of those games. Yeah, they were fantastic offensively, shooting a high percentage from the field, moving the ball around, really sharing the ball, 22 assists in their last basketball game at Utah Valley. But if you can't get stops defensively, you have to guard the, don't guard the art, you give up a lot of and one situations, it's not gonna lead to any victories. And that's where they're really struggling. Coach Marley's emphasis in practice this year has been Take on the one-on-one -on -one challenge defensively and stop your man. Well, one guy that's going to have to step up for the final three games here on their home court. He did so in the WAC tournament a year ago. 15 straight games, double-digit scoring for Carlos Johnson. Carlos Johnson has been absolutely fantastic. He's been leading this team on offense. What a true leader really does. He's 100 points away from getting 1,000 points in a GCU uniform. Lopes need him to get off to a quick start tonight, really get this crowd engaged in this basketball game. Another guy, the big man, Alessandro Labor, over 20 points per game during the recent road trip. He's had his troubles against Against New Mexico State, he's going to have to step up to the challenge tonight. Yeah, as Coach Marley says, big number 15, and, and that Aggies uniform always gives him some trouble. But he's got to mix up the inside and the outside game. Really keep the defense off balance. Be able to pass out of the post and the double team and find his teammates out there on the perimeter. They need the big man to have a huge game. And how about the fab freshman, Javon Blackshear? He had 21 points in that first game on the road trip, only five. Yeah, as in the uh, conclusion, but he has been just stellar this year. He really has been good. One of two players in the nation to average more than 10 points, five rebounds, and three assists. So doing a fantastic job, really understanding where his teammates are on the floor, how to get them engaged in this game, sharing the basketball. He can hit the outside shot now and has developed a three-point range as well. Blackshear a little bit under the weather here. We'll keep an eye on that, but he's ready to go for the low. How about these Aggies from New Mexico State? 22 and six overall, second longest winning streak in D1 basketball at 16 games in a row. Dayton, the Flyers at 17 in a row, and they come in with a lot of depth. Let's talk about one of their the stars, and that's their leading scorer currently, Jabari Rice, 6'4 guard. Yeah, 6'4, 180 pounds. This guy can really flat out go. Really shoot that three, 41% from behind the arc. He's taken 239 field goals. 120 of those have wow. come from behind the arc. So this guy really likes to shoot the long ball, take the lid off the defense. He can rebound the basketball and run the floor. Shoots 49% from the field. He has averaged 24 and a half points per game the last two games. We'll keep an eye on Jabari Rice. We'll send it back upstairs to you, Kate. 
All right, guys. Well, obviously, we know it's going to come down to what happens on the court in the basketball physical game, but it's also a mental game. So how key is it for these little players to have a short memory after that road trip? And I imagine, too, Scott, from a player's perspective, when it's that rivalry game, it probably doesn't take too much to get hyped up for what you want to go out there and accomplish. Yeah, you got to have a short memory. And I love this one because it is a rivalry game. you got to get in that lap, lock into that game plan, lock into the scouting road, the player personnel. Really come out focused, ready to go, show your middle strength. I think, yeah, why not? This is the best game to have after a disappointing road swing where they their offense definitely showed up, but they've got to reset here, and they've got to play really strong defensively where this game's going to be over early. Sorry, guys. I was just looking for that reset button. I'm ready to reset it, and let's get it going. We'll continue to count down the tip-off. We'll see you guys in just a moment with the call. But first, we're going to take a quick timeout here on the Lopes pregame show. And when I come back, we'll check in with the Lopes insider, Paul Coro. He has an inside scoop on what the Lopes need to do tonight to get that victory. Plus, he'll take us around the campus to check on the other athletic squads here at GCU. We'll be right back with more Lopes pregame show. Desert, to where the mountains touch the sky. This is Sanderson Ford country, where Arizona's pride. Sanderson Ford country, built on serving you. Sanderson Ford satisfaction in everything we do. We're Arizona's pride. Sanderson Ford. Waking up with peace of mind. Just one of the little perks you get with the SRP Power app. Use it to make conscious decisions on the energy you use every day. No guessing. Everything you need to know. Download the SRP Power app now. SRP, delivering water and power. I'm not even playing this up for TV. I really have goosebumps. I am excited about games like this. I am a true sports fan. I love when you get to cover big games like that, and I really feel like the stage is set tonight here at GCU Arena as the Lopes go up against first place Aggies trying to upset their perfect record. And now we welcome in Lopes insider Paul Coro to kind of break down what's been going on with Dan Marley's squad. You were with them on the road. Obviously didn't go as they had hoped. They were riding that three game win streak and then Utah Valley, Seattle, you kind of didn't play out in the Lopes' favor. What have you seen happen in these last couple games? Well, this is the kind of ideal game to wipe away a bad road trip. Nobody's, nobody's talking about what happened last week anymore because all attention is on a team that is rolling 31 wins in a row against WAC competition. They clinched the WAC. They're the ones that, and they haven't uh, beaten the Aggies since 2017. So this is the one they get up for. They felt like they did not give a good representation of themselves at Las Cruces. Right. Um, they could play them better than that. And New Mexico State, for all its undefeated record, hasn't been tested regularly this year. They've had three or four games that came down the wire with some. I hate to mention it, bank three-pointers that takes up last time. Lopes fans know that well. <laughs> well, speaking of the three points, uh, let's talk about some of the play beyond the arc with the Lopes. Isaiah Brown, has he been logging some extra time in the gym or what? Because he has really turned it up, uh, shooting nearly 50% from beyond the arc in the last eight games. What have you seen from his game? Yeah, he's offensively, he's really locked in. He's looked like he's had a game base offensively. He's shot 48%, like you mentioned, on uh, threes after being 31% before that. And the, the Lopes need that scoring off the bench. Lorenzo Jenkinson scored the last couple games. And when they when their bench outscores opponents, they're 7-0. And, and so Isaiah Brown's really got to go, and he's got to pick it up on both ends, though. 
Right, and then uh, kind of just switching gears, talking uh, a little bit about baseball because we were obviously out there for the home opener just a couple weeks ago. Very impressive how the Lopes went out there, took two games from the series from Oklahoma State, followed that with a win over Oregon, and now they'll be tested on the road going up against Stanford. How have you seen Andy Stankiewicz's team start off this season? Yeah, it's like exactly what everybody expected from the baseball team. Pitching's loaded. Their, their ERA is 2.64 so far. Uh, they not only won that series against a top 25 team, Oklahoma State, but then they beat Oregon in the next game. This weekend, they're going to Stanford. Andy Stankiewicz makes a great schedule, and they really test themselves. And, and they're a fun environment at home. They, you saw it. They had almost 4,000 people at that opening night. I know. It's very impressive. And, uh, you know, Andy Stink was always saying to be the best, you have to beat the best. Obviously, that'll be Dan Marley's motto tonight as well. But staying with hoops, but jumping over the women's side of things. Nicole Powell's team just a couple weeks ago, sole possession of first place, still in that fight with Kansas City, really performing beyond expectations. How has the youth been leading that squad? The, the women's team's been so impressive. They had an eight-game winning streak until that loss this weekend, but they're still tied for first place. You know, May Bryant right there is one of the freshmen who's done it. They're loaded up on freshmen and sophomores. But Deja Daniel, you see there, she's the senior. She's going to be an all whack player. She's a double-double machine. She's the one that kind of has opened up everything around her, and she's been such a great leader for Nicole Powell and the coaching staff to kind of show everybody else. But you see right there, they got three games left, and first place is on the line. But they were picked to finish seventh by the coaches. So to even be in this position is a real credit to the Lopes coaching staff. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, a lot happening on the campus right now with a lot of different uh, teams in action. How about men's volleyball, ranked top 10 in the nation? We know they've gone out there, recruited some great players, and it really seems like this could be their year to continue to perform well. What have you seen been one of their strengths? Yeah, some of their strengths? I don't know. It's been a volleyball year. Beach you know, volleyball, too, yeah. yeah. Women did a great job in the fall and got to the WAC final and turned it around. Like you mentioned, the men have been beaten three top 10 teams this month, and now they're in the top 10. And then in beach volleyball, they just got into the top 10 because they beat California in their opener. So all credit to all three of those programs for making such an instant impact in this Division One era. Right, and uh, winning is in the air for Lopes Athletics, so let's hope it carries over here into GCU Arena. Thank you so much, Lopes Insider Paul Coral, for checking in with us. And we'll continue this purple pregame party here on the Lopes pregame show. And uh, we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we check in on a former athlete who left his mark here on the hardwood as well as throughout the campus. A very special athlete. We want to share that story with you when we come back. So don't go anywhere. It's a big one. The Aggies are in town against the Lopes. We'll be right back. Today at Whataburger, we're picking the Buffalo Ranch Chicken Strip Sandwich. You asked for it, and it's back. We got three chicken strips, two slices of Monterey Jack cheese, Whataburger's own buffalo sauce, a little bit of buttermilk ranch. The combination is just right. It's crunchy, and then it's spicy, and then it's cool. Your mouth is exploding with flavor. It just all works together, and then you add the cheese in there. It kind of wakes me up, honestly. My goodness. I can see myself eating this every time I come here. The Buffalo Ranch Chicken Strip Sandwich. It's back, and it's only for a limited time. Order all your favorites from your phone. Whether you crave the night or savor the day, here we give you all a place to play. Talking Stick Resort, play in style. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show coming at you live here on Fox 10 Extra as we count you down to tip off with the first place Aggies in the house against GCU. The Lopes looking to erase all memories of a road trip with a big win over the rival three Aggies tonight. Kate Longworth coming at you. And you know that every February our country celebrates the impact African Americans have had here on, in the U.S. And at GCU, they are doing the same thing. And so right now we take a few moments to reflect on an athlete who had not only a stellar career here as a student, but also a basketball player. He left his mark and will forever be remembered about what he was able to accomplish in a low student war. Everyone else was crying when I graduated. And me, I was laughing. Because I said, me, 
from the project with a degree, impossible. Back then, if you was from the project, the big deal was to brag about what you did on the court or on the football field. It never in my wildest dream did I ever think of going to college, especially getting a degree, until coach came and offered me a scholarship. I just thought it was, a, you know, like going to school. And I walked into class late, and I sat in the back of the room because, you know, that was normal. At the end of class, everyone came up and started shaking my hand. And my expectation was not to be treated special, but to be treated like everyone else. One time we went out to eat, and I was riding with Ed. He was my uh, roommate, and uh, he wanted to wanted me to go to lunch with him. And once I saw the restaurant, I said, Ed, that's okay, uh, you know, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> because it was one of those restaurants that I knew that I couldn't, uh, at that time, wasn't allowed to go. He said, don't worry about it, Big T. You don't have to worry about the money. I got this. We go in, I tried to tell him not to. The waitress walked up and she said, sir, I can serve you, but I can't serve him. Ed looked at her and he said, why? It's, if it's about money, I got enough money to buy you in this whole place. And I said, Ed, Ed, let's go. Let's go, let's get up and go. So it was a choice of me leaving and she serving him, or we both uh, had to leave and we both left. But that basketball season, 58, yeah, when we went undefeated, my role on that team was, <laughs> well, I ended up being the top scorer and the top rebounder. Why was I such a good rebounder? Coach Brazzler told me, TC, on both ends of the court, when they shoot, the ball is yours, go get it. Don't let anyone take it away from you. And that's what I did. I put a total of 50 years in education. At the same school where I was a student, I ended up being a teacher there. After being a teacher there, I became a system principal. And the odd thing about that was the fact that some of the teachers that taught me as a system principal, I ended up being their boss. And that was, that was weird. Now that I look back on it, I said, wow. Knowing where Grand Canyon is now and how they plan and the kind of players they get, had I not been successful, they wouldn't have the players that they have now. I didn't realize at the time that the youngsters in the project looked up to me as a role model. They told me that once I went to college and was successful, they knew that they could and I'm proud of that. So many students and athletes that will suit up tonight. Very proud of the work TC Dean did changing the atmosphere here on the campus. And he will be remembered always in the hardwood here because he has just found out he will be inducted into the GCU Alumni Hall of Fame. Lots to celebrate with the luster's career he had here, and hopefully the Lopes keep up the winning spirit that TC Dean first established. Tonight would be a big way to do it. If they come up with the upset win over the Aggies, how are they gonna accomplish that? Well, we'll find out when we come back as Barry Battelle checks in with Coach Marley to get tonight's game plan. We'll be right back with the head coach right up. Curiosity fuels you. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems, you're helping to build a better tomorrow. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu online. 
Canyon State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show where we're coming at you live right now on Fox 10 Extra and we will be with you not only tonight, Saturday, but also next Saturday as the Lopes finish off the regular season with three home games before heading to WAC Turkey play in Las Vegas in just a couple weeks. But first on everyone's mind, tonight's action against the Aggies. And so we go down to Barry Patel who was standing by with head coach Dan Marley. Thanks, Kate. Yeah, Dan, uh, coming back here to the home court for three straights to close out the regular season. Tough uh, road trip coming back after a couple of tough losses where your team certainly from an offensive standpoint lit it up for an average of 84 and a half points per game. But I know you talked uh, after that those two games about the defense kind of wasn't wasn't part of the uh, luggage that was sent on the on the trip. Yeah, it was a little disappointing. We have a hard time, especially with quick guards that get into the paint in both Seattle and uh, Utah Valley do a really good job of penetrating, and we did a poor job of keeping them in front. And not only that, we fouled a lot, which mm -hmm. is something we don't like to do. So I uh, had a tough time getting uh, stop them from getting into the basket and then uh, putting them at the free throw line. So that combination really hurt us. Carlos Johnson certainly put up some, some big numbers in the game, but you mentioned about foul trouble. He fouled out of both of those games. Yeah, you know, he tends to pick up some fouls early, and that always hurts with him and Alessandro getting early foul trouble. It really limits what we can do, especially offensively. But as you said, we were really good offensively and that wasn't the problem we just have to really start connecting defensively and uh, find a way to stop people from getting in the paint and then finishing with a rebound um, and if we do that we'll be okay so obviously with tonight with new mexico state a team that really shoots the ball extremely well moves the ball is very unselfish uh, tenacious uh, tenacious on the board so we have our work cut out for us and it's an opportunity for javon blackshear do you sense how his game is going down here down the stretch you, sometimes you you wonder if a freshman you know they don't play this amount of games that, if fatigue's ever a factor? Well, I don't think it's a factor. We've, you know, we've had 10 guys one time uh, this week for practice, so we've had eight or nine guys. So uh, practice has been very limited, so I don't think fatigue has anything to do with it. Javon's a warrior. He's played basketball his whole life. He's used to playing a lot of games. Uh, the thing about Javon is that he, he's a really good player and he's only getting better. He had an off game at Utah Valley, mm -hmm. uh, one of the few that he's ever had here as, as a lope. So uh, I expect him to bounce back and he's gonna have to play well for us tonight. Definitely, as, as well as the other big leader, and that's the big man, and that's Alessandro Laver. What are your thoughts about Alessandro? He's had his struggles against New Mexico State, especially against the big Spanish. Yes, because they work uh, really hard. They outwork him, to be honest with you. They're very athletic and they're quick. So Alessandro, I keep telling him all the time that uh, he's got to be aggressive offensively. Sometimes he catches it down there, and they will monster him or double, but sometimes he catches and he waits for it. He's got to catch it, be very aggressive, uh, look to the basket as soon as he catches it, and find a way to get some shots. And as I told him today, he's our best player, and he's got to act like it. You, I've, I've heard uh, recurring uh, ball pressure, ball pressure. Is that something that's going to be key against New Mexico State here tonight? Well... Yeah, no. I mean, uh, we got to be careful because if we get too much ball pressure, that's when we tend to get beat off the dribble. But they do a lot of high-low stuff where they throw it into the post and they like to seal. So as a four-man, if, if the five-man's posting up, the four-man has to get out there and make uh, make that tough, uh, uh, that pass very difficult. So uh, you got to play to your abilities. Uh, we always want to have ball pressure, but you also have to keep your man in front. Another guy that's been, at least from the uh, arc in the last eight games, at close to a 50% clip, about 47.8% to be exact, Isaiah Brown. He'll, he'll be uh, looked upon here tonight as well to contribute. Yeah, again, uh, offense isn't a problem. Isaiah's been good offensively. He's got to be able to start uh, getting down and guarding people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he he's not the only one. As I said, our guards have to really concentrate and take pride in not letting guys get around. So offensively, we've been good. Isaiah's a scorer. Uh, he knows when to take his shot. I think he's better when he's not so ball dominant and he's patient and takes the open shots when he gets it. Uh, but he's going to be good offensively. But uh, again, it's all about for us right now is, is getting back uh, to what we have to do defensively. You know, one thing that I, I caught when you were on the on uh, your weekly radio show this week was talking about playing on two feet, mm -hmm. which I thought was really interesting and, and what players can do when they go in, especially when they drive and, and all the things they can do off of two feet, pivot, Yes. Yeah. Uh, the Mexico is an elite team at taking the charge. Uh, they're always in there. They help from the strong corner. Uh, they sink and fill, and they get in there. So uh, 
For example, if Carlos drives, he's going to see a lot of bodies. So when you go in there off of one foot, uh, it's hard to stop your momentum. So going off of two feet, you can pump fake. Uh, you can hit other people. Uh, and that's been a big component of why we've been better offensively the last month or so. The guys are really starting to go in there under control, playing off two feet. And you see there giving pump fakes, mm -hmm. yep. and then guys moving and find, finding people. So we've stressed that all year. For whatever reason, it kicked in about you know two and a half, three weeks ago, and we've been a lot better at it. Are well, you taking on a team that has the second longest uh, in the nation winning streak? They're coming in riding a 16-game winning streak, only Dayton at 17 straight. How do you uh, how do you approach this game tonight on your home court against? Well, the I told them we just got to play harder than them. Uh, they're a team that uh, is very unselfish. They're extremely talented. They are every year. Uh, you don't win as many games as they do every year if you're not talented, but we just got to play harder. Um, I didn't think we played hard enough uh, at New Mexico State. They came out and shot the ball extremely well at the beginning. We're going to have to find people, and then uh, we just got to limit them one bad shot, get a rebound, and get out and run. But I just think it's going to be us just uh, playing with extreme effort tonight. You've got this, and then uh, two remaining games on the home court before you to head to the uh, WAC tournament in Las Vegas with the second seed still up in the air in a pretty log jammed uh, western athletic conference yeah you know we want to keep playing well the most important thing is is hopefully going to the WAC tournament with a couple wins under our belt got a great opportunity to uh to feel better about ourselves tonight it's been a disappointing year but to to be able to come in here and hopefully beat a new mexico state team as you said it's it's gotten quite a bit of a role it'd be a huge shot in the arm and to be able to finish uh, with utrg and and uh in bakersfield would be great for us and then we really can start focusing and and try to win three games in march all right good luck tonight. all right thank you dan marley we'll send it back upstairs to you kate all right thank you guys and uh the party it has started here inside gc arena as the student section, the Havoc, they get ready to play six-man tonight as the Lopes look to go out there and play an upset to the first-place Aggies in the house tonight. When we come back, we'll take a quick trip around the whack. Don't worry, you don't have to leave your couch, so just sit back, relax. We'll be right back. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant, in-laws were coming, a little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. The 13-0 Aggies are in the house tonight, and the Havocs are ready to go. GC players ready to play underdog role tonight. They are fighting for that number two seed heading into Las Vegas next month when the WAC tournament takes place. So let's take a quick trip around the WAC to see exactly the landscape right now. New Mexico State in the house tonight. They are riding that 28 straight regular conference victory streak. Meanwhile, as well, Brown of Seattle U was named WAC Player of the Week. Cal Baptist did defeat Utah Valley. Cal Baptist, so you'll remember, is not eligible for tournament play as they make that transition to Division One. play. Well, who is eligible for tournament play and March Madness? That would be the Lopes, and they have a chance tonight to make some headlines if they can upset the Aggies in that house tonight with a perfect record. And I'll tell you what, the party, it has started here at GCU Arena. We'll be bringing you all the live action and excitement. So keep the dial locked in right here at Fox 10 next time. We'll take a quick break. But when we come back, Barry and Scott have the call as Dan Marley's team takes the court. Bossy, Bossy. Just looking at my kids like I'm Bossy. Bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang. To Y little S to the B step Flandern and mid and edges. Is it? We needed 
one more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes! No calories, no sweeteners, all smiles. Bubbly, sparkling water. Crack a smile. Live from the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University and inside GCU Arena, where tonight, the Lopes begin a three-game homestand to close out the regular season by hosting the first place New Mexico State Aggies. Good evening and welcome to GCU Basketball. Alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams, I'm Barry Vitale. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. Well, here we are, the Aggies in town, and it's always a high-intensity atmosphere. But what a moment for the Lopes here to seize tonight. This is the last best chance for the Lopes to restart their season. Went on three-game win streak to only go on the road and lose two in a row. They have to re-engage, lock into this game plan, and be ready to play right from the tip tonight. And one of those guys for the Lopes will be Carlos Johnson. Double-digit scoring in the past 15 games. He'll be called upon tonight. CJ has been fantastic offensively. He has really put this team on his back, and this is his time of the season. When he start getting to Vegas in the Western Athletic Conference Tournament, he plays his best basketball. There's a lot of people involved, and he just uses his strength and flexes his muscles down inside. The Aggies come in riding a 16-game winning streak. That's second best in the nation behind 17 straight by the Dayton Flyers. They are led by their leading scorer, Jabari Rice, 6'4", redshirt sophomore. Yeah, Jabari Rice is absolutely fantastic. Loves to shoot the long ball. Shot, shot 50% of his field goals from behind the arc. 123s on the season. This kid's absolutely dynamite. Lopes have to do two things tonight. They got to make him feel like he is always playing in a crowd and really make sure that he doesn't hurt them with penetrations to the basket. It's time to get things started. This place is rocking. Let's send it down to the public address announcer, Paul Denuser, with our prayer and our national anthem. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the beautiful GCU Arena for tonight's Western Athletic Conference men's basketball matchup between the Aggies of New Mexico State University and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. Tonight's game is sponsored by Arizona Leadership Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise if you are able. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with the word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by GCU's Dean of Students and Campus Pastor, Dr. Tim Griffin. Join me in prayer, would you please? Our God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together for this event tonight. Thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy in our lives. We pray that you would watch over these players as they compete. Thank you for these incredible fans as they've come out to cheer on the Lopes. We pray your blessings on all of us this evening, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Griffin. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with a presentation of the National Anthem. Tonight, the Star Spangled Banner will be performed by the Sunny Slope High School Choir under the direction of Tamara Kraus.
Thank you, Sunny Slope High School Choir. The New Mexico State Aggies, 22 and six overall, seven and three away from Las Cruces. 13-0 in the Western Athletic Conference. They've secured the top spot. Their head coach in his third season is Chris Jams. Here is the Talking Stick Resort starting lineups for the Aggies. Evan Gilliard, the second. Jabari Rice, Trevellan Queen, Johnny McCants, and Yvonne Aore Koachea. Yeah, we're going to keep our eye on the 6'7", 225-pound junior forward, Johnny McCants. This guy has been an absolute Lopes killer in eight games. He's averaging 22 points. Last game versus the Lopes, he was a perfect 7-7 seven seven from the field, 3-for-3 three three from behind the arc. He had 17 points and 12 boards. Let's slow him down tonight. Associate head coach is James Miller. The assistant coaches are David Anwar and Corey Barker. The former head coach at Bowling Green and assistant at Wichita State, Chris Jans, doing a great job at New Mexico State. Time now to introduce you to GCU. Seventh season at the helm as head coach of the GCU Lopes. Here is his starting five, brought to you by Talking Stick Resort. Playing in style. Mikey Dixon, Javon Blackshare Jr., Carlos Johnson, Bryce Okpo, and Alessandra Labor. Yeah, look at the big man in the middle tonight to have a big game. He had five points last game at New Mexico State tonight. He's got to have a big one. He's got to play like the guy that had 23 points and moving to second place all time in low scoring. The associate head coach, Marvin Menzies. The assistant coaches are Chris Cremelone and Isaac Jew. Director of basketball operations, Dylan Hidalgo. Special assistant to the head coach is Johnny Hill. The video coordinator is Matt Lopez. Director of sports medicine, Jordy Hackett. And the director of sports performance is Gabe Borland. Time for our three keys to the game brought to you by Sanderson Ford. The best, best play at a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. Yeah, close the board of this Aggies team can absolutely score. Averaging 10 points more than their opponents. Scored over 2,000 points on the season. 350 points from the free throw line. Must keep State out of their interior tonight. Admission launch. Attack on offense from long range. Shoot the three. Aggies only allow 42% from the field. Tough sled inside, got to get the long ball, cook it tonight, and then home cook it. Folks are at home for their last three games of the season, and they absolutely must treat New Mexico State as the launch point to get them going for the rest of the year. Get cooking early, get this crowd into it, show them that you're willing to outwork the Aggies tonight, so they'll continue to bring the energy for 48 minutes. Get that sixth band working for you. This is the 17th meeting between the teams and New Mexico State has dominated. They've won seven straight. They're 14 and two against the Lopes. Two and four are GCU here at home. New Mexico State eight and zero. Oh. And at the WAC tourney, they are two and zero oh in the championship game. Our officials are Larry Spalding, Bob Staffan, and Kirby Sitton. Both pro to take the tip. Along with Aore Koachea. Brooks fans remain on their feet till the home team hits the first bucket. The Aggies bring it up. Gilliard plays catch there. McCants. Queen. Back out top. Yeah, interesting to see the Lopes come out in zone defense for this first possession. Got the Aggies a little frustrated. Back out driving Gilliard stops, trying to bust through and 
Kisses it off the glass. Uh, don't want that. You know, shot clock's about to expire. They let it get right into the heart of their defense. I thought maybe he might have gotten away with a little bit of a travel slide in his pivot foot, but just beat the 30-second shot clock. Johnson takes it. Oh, a lot of con uh, contact underneath there, but the officials are saying that it was just a blocked shot and that the ball is going to remain to the loaf. But look at this. Carlos Johnson hard to the hole. A lot of contact underneath there. No call. They're going to let him Either play tonight. Way. Yeah. 19 on the shot clock. Labor takes it from Johnson. Blockshire driving baseline. Kick back out. Goes into the Aggies bench. Yeah, that's that good Aggie defense. They really slide their feet on the dribble drive. Blackshear, a little under the weather tonight, as you mentioned, was not able to turn the corner. Got caught in the air with the basketball and nobody to turn, uh, throw the ball to. And you had to throw it right out of bounds to the Aggies bench. All the way over to Queen. Kick back out. Queen has it again. Lays up the three. Off the front of the rim. Rebound. Aggies will have it. It went off Blackshear. Battling there with Gilliard. The long shots produce long rebounds. That's why you need five guys going to that basket on those boards every time a long shot is taken because that ball could bounce outside that interior area. You've got to get somebody to get those long boards. Weiss back out. Gilliard looking left. Moves right. Stuttering in, kicks back out, long distance, McCants, not there, rebound, Dixon gets a hand on it, brings it off, stops beyond the arc. Nice work on the boards that time by Dixon, battling underneath. Moves right, drives, kicks out, stopping and popping, Okpo doesn't go, Aggies with the rebound. That's Okpo's shot right there, little 10-footer on the baseline. Gilliard beyond the arc, leaves it for Rice, looks for three. Off the mark. Loose ball picked up by Dixon. Wolves down by two early on, looking for their first bucket. Into Labor. Turns to the bucket. Kicks back out. Blackshire puts it on the ground. Drives. Stopping. Not there for the Lopes early on. Again, a lot of contact on that dribble drive. Driving Gilliard. Foul called on Blackshire. Now the whistle. Yeah, you can see how quickly the Aggies can get the ball from one end of the floor to the other. Just five seconds came off of that shot clock before the shot even went up. Just so fast in transition. Down in a blur, and you can see Blackshear swiping down at the basketball before getting his hands raised in the air. The officials are going to call that one. Gilliard at the line, 68% free throw shooter. Talked about him earlier tonight. Switched up his number on his jersey. To... Going with zero. Connects on both. Little press here, getting into Blackshire. Now they back off. Four nothing early on, Aggies. Blackshear motions over to Johnson. Back out front, Okpo, left alone. Johnson, a long three. In and out, rebound Aggies. Oh, last two shots offensively for the Lopes. Uh, deep in that basketball before the cylinder spit them back out. Look at the battle inside between the two picks. Quick ball movement by the Aggies. Gilliard drives. And in, wide open lane for Gilliard. Oh, he is really fast with that basketball and tricky with a little hesitation dribble. Phil, uh, full black shoot. Dixon, travel. Shoot the ball, Marley said to Dixon. I have no idea why he hesitated. Wolves have had five offensive possessions, two turnovers, and they're shooting 0 for 3. Not the start here on their home court they were hoping for against the top team in the conference. Gilliard back out. He has it again. Played sharp here early on. Rice moved right, cut back left, bounce pass. Ole Kochea. 
Baseline. Oh, did he step out? Man, that right foot looked like very close. Beautiful spin move. The double team came from the middle. He spun baseline away from him, was able to get by Labor for the easy two once he got by Labor. Driving Johnson tried to thread a needle, but didn't happen. Wow, you can see it. It's very tough to get a bucket against this Aggies D. Gilliard leaves. Alright, Koa Chea puts the Aggies up 10 zip early on, and they are feeling it here on the visitors' court. They're riding a 16-game winning streak and looking sharp by the Aggies. Welcome to your hometown, Whataburger. Hello. Back here, you can add as much flavor as you like. Grilled peppers and onions, bacon's perfect. Gotta have them grilled jalapenos. It completely changes the taste of the burger. Those add-ons just add a little extra touch. It sets the Whataburger apart. It takes it up kind of to the next level. Avocado goes well with everything. What doesn't it go with? <laughs> They're gonna make it just right every time I come. Those burgers make for me. They say you can't buy happiness, but the add-ons get real close. <laughs> We're adding big flavor here at your hometown Whataburger. <laughs> Whether you crave the night or savor the day, here we give you all a place to play. Talking Stick Resort, play in style. GCU Men's Basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play in a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. And by SRP, delivering water and power. Barry Butel, Scott Williams, and we send it down to Kate Longworth. All right, well, obviously tonight's game one circled on the calendar for low players and fans alike because the Aggies are the team to beat. As we take a look at the WAC standings, not only are they a perfect 13-0 in conference play this season, but dating back to last year, they have won 28 straight regular conference games, sitting in that first place with just a couple weeks out to the WAC tournament play in Las Vegas. Cal Baptist. Looks good with that record, 9-4, and four, but they are not eligible for tournament play as they make that transition into Division One play. Seattle U and Grand Canyon University, though, they are fighting for that number two seed. And so although the Aggies, you know, have control right now and whack regular season play, as we all know, there's a reason why you put that madness in you when you come into March play, guys, right? It is that third season. Right now, they are have been on a roll. You mentioned a 28 straight in conference, and you had three more for the uh, tournament. That's 31 straight league games. Inbound, Johnson gathers. Picked over. Blackshear driving. Carlos Johnson, he can't put it on. Putting it in, though. Bryce Oakpool. Thank you. That's where you want Bryce Oakpool to live. On that offensive blast, you're not going to run any plays for him. You're going to tell him to go get everything off that offensive blast. And he was certainly a right in the right spot following up that drive by Carlos Johnson but I like Carlos Johnson putting his head down and going to the rim good things will happen if he continues to play like that Gilliard leaves it there for Rice he takes it in just too many points in the paint really driving that ball hard to the Lopes defense Locks it. Oh, got a hand on it. Oh, no, and I love Carlos Johnson. The double tap. A lot of turnovers here to start this game and giving up too many points inside the paint. Yeah, that's the third turnover for the Lopes here in this early going. And that, that's... Look at, I like oh, a little three-quarter press. Try to get the Lopes going here. Gilliard takes it back from McCants, moves to his left. Queen, Rice, back to Queen. Far side, Gilliard kicks back to McCants. Goes inside, kick back out. They spread it around. Not there, Lopes ball. Well, that's, you know, it wasn't a perfect job defensively, but the Lopes at least were scrambling, trying to cut off that interior. They gave up the long three, and they didn't, they didn't get burned by giving up that outside shot. Queen and McCants take a seat. 
The Aggies display their depth. I didn't mention this, how good this team has been in the conference play. Amazing. Already have wrapped up the regular season title. Their third regular season title in a row. Renzo Jenkins in the game. Labor swarmed way over to Johnson. Has to quickly get it into Blackshirt. Picked out for Labor for three. Bam! Well, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> the result is fantastic as Blackshirt was able to corral that high pass and find his open big man out there on the perimeter. Terrell Brown in the game. Kick back out for Rice. Aore Kowachea working on labor. Back out, loses the ball. Johnson picks it up. That might have been Blackshear getting a hand in there and knocking that ball away. Jenkins, in front of the Aggies bench, looks for three. That's short. But underneath was Javon Blackshear. <laughs> Jenkins will tell you he was passing that ball to Blackshear. Yeah, okay. All right, sure. Couple offensive rebounds and putbacks, and now all of a sudden that 12 to 2 disadvantage is now only five points. Bounce pass into Bobbitt, back out for Brown. Ralph Brown, bounce pass, back out, high low, back out, well beyond the arm. Picked up by Blackshear, quickly up, Isaiah Brown. Moving, stopping, floating, short off the rim. The Aggies pick it up. Foul on Brown. That's the one I would have liked to see Brown use his size and height advantage and drive it right in there. But look at this last one that Blackshear finds. Uh, Blaver out there on the perimeter, and I love this one right here because it looked like Jenkins had shot the air ball, but it was really a pass to his what? freshman point guard underneath. What? <laughs> well, maybe not. Maybe it was an air ball. You all right? But Blackshear did a nice job making sure he got to the glass. That's what I think I love about that freshman. He's not yep. afraid to go inside and get on the glass. Rice. I love the way this Lopes team is communicating on defense with verbal and hand gestures, getting guys to rotate to the right spots on the floor in that trap. Kick back out. Three seconds in the lane. Alessandro Lager fired up underneath. Lopes on a 7-2 run, playing some good defense. Chance to get some more points. McCanns comes back into the game. Queen as well. Ore Koche is going to take a seat. Rice is going to take a seat. With that little three-quarter press. Lopes have done that against Chicago State to get themselves going early in that game. I wonder if Coach Marley went to that to try to get his team fired up on the defensive end. It might lead to some easy opportunities on the offensive end. Jenkins in the paint, kicked out. Blackshirt. Labor to his right. Carlos Johnson looking to move. Threads the needle, loses the ball. Yeah, I think he had that ball poked away. Officials are going to say it's going to stay with Lopes' ball, but just seven seconds. Oh, excuse me, yeah, seven seconds to shoot on the shot clock. will have to hurt. Jenkins. Got to move. Brown. Off balance shot, not there. Jenkins probably had a better shot at it. Buchanan. Give him a little bit of room, bounce pass. Oh, they had to move quickly. Loose ball, Labor. Carlos got a hand on it. They're stuck, been stuck here on 12-7 for a little while, both teams. Brown, into Labor underneath. Patiently wait. Kiss off the glass. Great hands by Labor in traffic to catch that basketball. A little pump fake, get the defense off the floor. Then he goes back up and scores it. Nice 9-2 run. Loves getting long shots. Aggies take long shots from the outside. That'll silence people. Terrell Brown. I was just saying they hadn't had any success out there. And Brown went out there and dropped that one from three. Johnson. Labor. Leaves for Blackshear. Stopping inside the arc. Not there. Rebound. Labor got a hand on it. Aggies. Possession. 11.20 to go, opening half. The Lopes battling back, but the Aggies still lead by six. We'll step aside be right back from Phoenix.
foundation of strong values. You belong where your passions come to life. Grand Canyon University's online degree program in cybersecurity makes it convenient for you to join the newest front in keeping your community safe. GCU teaches you how to secure and protect a virtual environment. Join the growing field of cybersecurity. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Performance is your profession. You excel in bringing the best out of people in teams to discover their true potential, but you strive to take the next step in your career. GCU's PhD in Performance Psychology online degree program gives you the tools you need to elevate your performance to the next level and do it all within your tight schedule. When human excellence meets cutting edge technology, business advances. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Welcome back, live look inside GCU Arena with a live crowd here, lots of excitement. Right now the Aggies 15-9 over GCU with under 12 to go. And we're talking basketball tonight, but baseball also underway here in the desert. And I'm joined now by Diamondbacks manager Toria Lovello. And baseball is here, and you guys are underway with spring training games. The season just right around the corner. What are you anticipating for the Diamondbacks this year? Well, a lot of great things. You know, we feel very good about the team that we have. Uh, we brought some new faces in. We're super excited, but we can't play the game on a piece of paper. We got to go out and start working and get the job done. Speaking of those new faces, Madison Bumgarner made his spring game new tonight, retiring seven of the AD phase. Uh, what are you hoping to see from your ace and how did he look today? Well, just that. Somebody that we can really rely on. He's the number one, and we know that. But. His first outing was today. It told me that he's very prepared. The stuff came out really good. I know he gave up one run. I could care less about that. He's in a great spot. We're still playing ba basketball here. We can sit down, but I want to chat really quick because baseball, GCU baseball, will be uh, making a trip over to the Salt Rivers Fields to play you guys on March 17th. What have you seen just from the athletic programs here at GCU, from Andy Stankiewicz to Dan Marley? Well, as I'm getting to know the Valley a little bit, obviously this is a great um, a great landing spot for college athletes and you know I know Andy Stankiewicz personally he's done a terrific job here with the baseball program anytime we get him out to Salt River to play a game it's a very good day for me as well. All right we wish you the best of the season ahead and now let's get back to GCU basketball. What an athletic offensive rebound. Lopes player thought he had that ball and just got, just had it, just got snatched out of the air about 10 feet in the, in the air. Yeah, that's just hustle right there. I mean, they just are relentless. They're a very athletic group, and like you said, deep. Doesn't matter who comes off that pine, they are ready to perform. Dixon for three. In and out. Rebound, Aggies. Up tempo, quickly, moving in, out, back out it goes. Off the rim, but there's the rebound again for Queen and the putback. Oh! Look out, that left leg caught McCants. I didn't see the action. I saw the athletic put back, and he's going to have to come out he of this just game. He is awkwardly. badly. Yeah, he, that was, uh, you could tell he was not coming down. Oh, that's a shame. Don't want to see anybody ever get hurt no. out here. Take a look at it one more time. Don't get this one to go. He got up, and then does he step on somebody? Oh, he did. Oh, he, look was he, it Bobbitt? Look, I don't know if he stepped yeah. on somebody or did he, he did. hit a wet spot afterwards. I think it was Bobbitt's left foot that he came down on. Oh, no. That first shot was saw. Keep an eye on McCants. Brown. Labor. Kick back out, Dixon, Blackshear. Labor, two on him right now. They swarm him over to Dixon, one on the shot clock, and they're gonna have a shot clock violation. That is just a relentless team effort of defense. Yeah, they are fantastic in the half court defensively. Now they're, they're working on McCants' ankle over there on the bench. Right? Had cut it to three, but New Mexico State on a 7 0 run. It is a watch and win night, folks. Text win the whack to 602 639 8979. 
Name and where you're watching from. Put back again. Queen. Oh. An offensive foul on Queen after that put back. Yeah. A technical foul, rather. Technical foul on Queen. I don't know if he got him for taunting or excessive celebration. What that was, but he's playing. He is so excited here in this rivalry game. Gets in here and, and gets it, and then, oh uh, yeah, he, he did a chin up <laughs> on the rim there. He can't do that. But off the pine, four points and four boards. I think Aggie, Aggies fans will probably be okay with that. The way they're playing. Yeah, they're, they're, they're this, this energy level. Why would you want to? Why would you want to try to harness it? You know, you, one of those things they figure well, well they. You're playing against a team coming off of two losses, and you've already secured the regular season. You thought maybe they might come in here half-stepping. Uh, not a chance. They have come out here with both barrels, offensively and defensively, getting it done early. Teams love to come in here and try to silence this crowd. Johnson makes it work. Ah, Carlin Johnson flexes muscles down that baseline. Brown brings it up. Uh, Coach Marley got, he doesn't like to see his team get outworked on the glass. He's not going to be happy with all these offensive rebounds and second chance points. Buchanan directing traffic. Senior from Mississippi. Brown. Now for Bobbitt. Loose ball again. Fought after and won. Aore Koachea is owning the boards. That's not there. Dixon gathers that one in. Laver takes it from Mikey. Laver looking for Carlos. Bounce pass. Looking for some room. Two Aggies swarming him. Can't move. Kick back out. Four on the shot clock. Dixon nowhere to go. Brown throws it up. Rebound underneath. Picked up by the Lopes. Put back off the glass. Not there. Foul committed. Oh, my goodness. Well, it was as ugly as it gets offensively for 29 seconds, but yet they continue to fight and get on the offensive glass and are able to get themselves Another a second chance opportunity. 21 to 12, the Aggies on top of the Lopes here, opening half, and the Aggies came in and uh, punished the Lopes and have been uh, relentless on both ends of the court, showing why they are undefeated in this conference and riding the second best in the nation winning streak at 16 games. Well, they're very good offensively. They really do a nice job moving that basketball around the perimeter, play unselfish offensively and on defense. My goodness, I have not seen five guys work together so effectively shutting down an opponent. Yeah, unselfish. That's how Coach Marley talks about these Aggies. They are. It is a total team effort. Javon Blackshire trying to hold his own here against the Aggies here early on in the opening half. The freshman, man, we can't say enough great things about his effort. Now, I really like the way this kid comes out and plays. You know, he gives in there defensively, strips the basketball away. Then on offense, he gets on the offensive glass. He's got two points and two boards. Labor boy, I tell you what, he's got he's got an Ivan the strong underneath, and he's making him work for everything he got. He gets down low, so it's going to be, you know, Blackshear, and uh, Laver and Carlos Johnson are going to have to do a lot of heavy lifting if the Lopes going to have a chance to stay close here in this basketball game. They've split the last four games, but the Aggies have won the last two here in Phoenix. You have to travel back to 2017 with a big 83-71 win. Where the Aggies head coach is now the Lopes associate head coach, Marvin Menzies, who's out scouting and recruiting. For every three-point shot the GCU makes, Canyon State Credit Union will make a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. For more information, go to giving.gcu.edu. It is a watch and win night. All you need to do is text win the WAC to 602-639-8979 before halftime. Include your name in the city that you're watching the Lopes from, and you'll be entered into the watch and win contest. A winner will be randomly selected and announced 
in the second half for a pair of tickets to the WAC tournament. Lucky Dixon with four rebounds tonight at the line. Hits both. I like this little trap here, the Lopes have thrown on the Aggies after made free throws. Brown brings it up. Takes some seconds off of that clock. Gilliard back in the game. And they got Gilliard back there. Give him a little bit of a break. Buchanan comes in, the senior from Mississippi. Yeah. And he's rolling him in. Gilliard. Brown stays in. More to shoot. McCants in the game. Two, one. Have to throw it up. Not there. Loose ball. Picked up by the Aggies. Brown. Oh, Here we tough. go. Play great defense for 30 seconds, then you give up the offensive board. Seven offensive rebounds now for the Aggies here. <laughs> Early going. Driving, throwing it up, loose ball, Aggies. Man, they are just everywhere around the ball, and they are relentless. Yeah, it seems like Hustling. they got six guys in black jerseys out there. The way they can move and get to the glass, and they they follow their teammates to the boards. When someone drives that ball in there, they they follow in there to clean it up. Eight second chance points. Labor turns with his right hand and puts it home. Oh, nice job by Labor, beating patient, utilizing that, utilizing that great footwork that he's got on that block. Loves the left shoulder turn to the right hand hook. He's three for three from the field. Three, seven points. Rice paying catch with Gilliard. He leaves for Brown back to Rice. McCants back in the game. Aggies fans happy to see that. Gilliard leaves for McCants. He tried to put it home, but he's fouled by Carlos Johnson. What great interior passing there. But let's go back to this one by Labor. Hard down the left lane, then gets cut off by this, uh, the second man defender there, and then spins it back off that left sneaker to the left shoulder, right hand hook. I, I really like the way he's playing under control offensively. It's just defense down here. But can they get some bodies on bodies and keep them off that offensive glass? And can they keep them from penetrating that ball where they're not slipping it underneath the armpit of a help side defender so they don't get easy looks underneath? You know, we talked about it when they went on that row up to Seattle and Utah Valley. The offense wasn't the problem. No. It was the defense. They shot nearly 50% from the field. But it was the defense giving up 90, 90 points every time out. <laughs> that puts a lot of pressure on you to get a victory. Mikey Dixon. Brown from the Yankees bench, looking to drive, kick back out. Dixon drives, baseline, steps back. Brown way out. Seven on the shot clock. Inside labor, a little floater and in. Nice little pick and roll to the mid post area there by Laver. Four for four now. Cook it. McCants, Queen, underneath. Man, that was pretty. Amore Koachea. Yeah, you got to get a little more ball pressure if you're going to try to put two guys on the basketball so they can't pass it so effectively to break your, your uh, press. Go your Ryan Brown. Picked off. Queen, but he's picked off. Johnson, can he hit a three? Bam! Wow, that was big. They lost the ball, and you're thinking the Aggies are getting ready to run down and get themselves two or three at that end, but they cough it up and find Carlos Johnson on that left wing for the three. They needed that one to stay close to this team. Aggies lead by six, near side, Gilliard for three. Big law, big rebound, climbing up is the big man and the Aggies. All right, Kelechea underneath. Brown tries to pick it up. Aggies will have possession. Look at this one more time here. Labor goes underneath there, and he gets himself a little bucket inside. And then I love this little kick out to Carlos Johnson, who sends it home. Aggies, two games, 29 threes against the Lopes. Just one of 12 here so far. Blackshear back in this game too, Barry. You know, he's been under the weather, so they're probably going to monitor his minutes in the first half so he can finish strong down the stretch. All right, Coach Hale lost it twice and kicks it out. He's still got a second chance to put it home, though. 
Man, he's relentless, as is this Aggies team, man. They just don't give up. We just haven't seen a team move so fast. Lopes aren't yep. used to the speed on offense in which the Aggies can play. Brown. Oh, picked off. I don't know if he's going for labor. Mixed up, Aro Cochea puts it home. What a break. I mean, that's getting the turnover and getting it down to the offensive end, licking split. You got to say, I'm sorry, Barry, you, they got that stop that they wanted the previous time down the floor, but the turnover was costly. Give up another bucket inside in transition. Wolves just haven't hit that gear that the Aggies started with. Johnson, that's going to be off the mark. Labor reaching over. Go back to this New Mexico State Aggies. Fast break. I, I, I don't even know if fast is the right word. I mean, look at this long pass down the floor. Turn it into the dunk. Fast and furious. Came through dripping. Drip, drip. Came through dripping. Drip, drip. Came through dripping. Drip, drip. Thumbs on my wrist, they dripping. Ice. Came through dripping. Drip, drip. Came through dripping. Mountain Dew Ice. A clear, refreshing lemon lime dew. Coach Marley comes off the floor. So far, don't anticipate he's going to be really pleased. Well, I, not not on the defensive end because he, he didn't want to give up any layups. So he went to that little matchup zone and then the second chance baskets, not being able to rebound out of that zone has really hurt him. Go here, stops, drills, back out. Oro Kilicham lost the handle, but it went right back into Gilliard's hand. Little floater and in. Oh, you're just seeing how they were struggling from the outside. Then they knock in the triple. Push that advantage. The double finish. Back to 11 for the Aggies. The fans are loving it here. They've made the trip over. I was just in Las Cruces yesterday driving through. I should have spiked their Gatorade bucket or something. <laughs> the, way they, the way these guys came out in the locker room tonight. Johnson, long distance, short. Nobody home except for McCants. Yeah, exactly. They, they're getting two and three guys on the offensive board. The Lopes can't get two guys to go each time. Vice for McCants. Queen, beyond the arc. Looked inside, didn't find anybody driving around the corner and underneath is McCants kisses it off the glass uh, a little pick and roll on the perimeter and they were able to attack inside find the help side defenders man cut into the basket 7-0 run Rockshire bounce pass into labor oh they're good at this well they got all the labor for an offensive going. foul down there that's gonna be his second personal foul, so he's going to have to spend the rest of the half on the bench. Let's see if this is an offensive foul. He lowers that left shoulder into no doubt. They've been letting the bigs play, so that's one where Labor maybe 
has to get to the side of number 15's body and not so much square between the, the letters and the numbers. Yeah. Olga Kulachea has been Alessandro Labor's kryptonite. Yeah. Ron just smiling. Yeah, he, he knows exactly what he did. Yeah, he, he, he frustrates Labor. Labor's yep. having a good game tonight, but he knows he's going to have a couple plays where he'll frustrate Labor. He turns it over there, though. Yeah, he did. He tried to do a little too much with it after getting double teamed. Kick back out. Brown, wide open look. Too heavy. Jenkins, put back, hooping a hard. Clean came up over the top. Yeah, it took a play out of. New Mexico State's playbook of getting on that offensive glass. Doobie Jenkins right there to the front of the rim, out and works everybody, hustles up there, kicks the contact and finishes underneath. Bench loves it. I didn't mention how good Brown has been last eight games from the field, shooting nearly 49% from three, but not able to get that one to go. We've got to get hot here if the Lopes are going to stay close in this one. Lopes with eight second chance points. Queen took a seat. Ore Koachea took a seat. Robert Brown, Billiard in the corner. Rice, McCants, kick back out. Long three. Good. Brown. Great ball movement, swinging it from side to side, unselfish with the basketball. A couple players passed up shots to get their teammate a, a better look. Inside, Lorenzo Jenkins. Up over the top, Isaiah Brown. Tied by Brown. Terrell, stop, floater, good. Isaiah Brown. There's Brown. Maybe that'll be the shot that gets him going. With Labor on the bench, they need another score. Carlos Johnson and Blackshear can't do it by themselves. Dex win the whack to 602-639-8979. Enter your name where you're watching from. You'll be randomly entered in to be selected, perhaps, to receive a couple of tickets to the WAC tournament. Starts March 11th for the men. That's what I'm talking about. Getting a body on somebody, forcing them outside, making them come up over the back, getting that foul. Only the third foul for the Aggies. We're under 40 seconds to play. So no free throws on the other end. The Aggies do a good job playing solid defense without foul. I, I got to give this New Mexico State team a lot of credit here in this first half. They did not come out lackadaisical out of that locker room. They are ready to play. Coach Jans had this team fired up. Oh, they love playing here. In fact, they love playing a lot of places. They haven't lost since, what, December 14th against New Mexico? Brown drives. Goes off of Gilliard. Oh, it'll be interesting to see if they put another second back on this sh shot clock because the shot clock expired. Oh, they're oh, not going to put man. extra second on there. I thought they might put a half second. There was just a moment there before the... The ball went off a fan and the shot clock expired, but they're not going to give the Lopes the ball back. 8.6 8 seconds left to go in the half. Queen back in the game. One guy's in the game. Got a hand on that. Trying to work on McCants. Shot clock. Put it back, but it's expired. Nice job by the big guy coming over and protecting the rim. And Jans comes out it, with this lead. He's still fired up. And Gilliard. Let's set it down to Kate. Thank you, guys. Well, Coach, obviously, Aggies uh, riding a strong record, came out here, established the intensity. What did you see play out from your team, and what do you got to do in the second half? Too many second chance points for them. They're killing us on the boards, which is what they do. Uh, not doing a bad job, too much penetration, but when the ball goes up, we got to go get the rebounds out of our area, and we're not doing that. What will be your message to the team at the break? Got to play harder, tougher. Got to stop them from getting second sec ch second chance points. Then we got to keep throwing the ball to Ollie on the roll, and he's got to finish strong. All right, thank you very much. Alessandro Labor, leader of this team, did run into some foul trouble to end that first half. 
hopefully he and the young freshman Javon will be ready to go here in the second half. As we leave you here at the break right now, the Aggies with the 37-25 lead over GCU. But we're just getting started with our GCU halftime show. We'll be right back with more. To where the mountains touch the sky This is Sanderson Ford country Where Arizona's pride Sanderson Ford country Built on serving you Sanderson Ford satisfaction In everything we do Where Arizona's pride Sanderson Ford So one key component that makes the Waste Management Phoenix Open so successful is Cox Business. Over 700,000 people are gonna come enjoy TPC Scottsdale from digital TV to digital phones to security, and most importantly, that free Wi-Fi all over this property. We simply couldn't do it without a partner like Cox Business. We're grateful, we're thankful, it's a hole in one. Today at Whataburger, we're cooking the Buffalo Ranch Chicken Strip Sandwich. You asked for it, and it's back. We got three chicken strips, two slices of Monterey Jack cheese, Whataburger's own buffalo sauce, a little bit of buttermilk ranch. The combination is just right. It's crunchy, and then it's spicy, and then it's cool. Your mouth is exploding with flavor. It just all works together, and then you add the cheese in there. It kind of wakes me up, honestly. My goodness. I can see myself eating this every time I come here. The Buffalo Ranch Chicken Strip Sandwich. It's back, and it's only for a limited time. Order all your favorites from your phone. Welcome back to our Lopes Halftime Show coming at you here on Fox 10 Extra. The Red Panda is the halftime entertainment today. Right now, GCU trails the first place Aggies, 37-25 the score here at GCU Arena. And yes, we're talking about college basketball tonight with the Lopes in action trying to pull off the upset. But a lot of sports in action here throughout the GCU campus. One of those teams, Beach Volleyball, last year, it was a lot of youth, but now they have learned to grow. They know the system, and they're ready to go out there and compete. Last year was really a growth year for us. Um, you know, we're still full of underclassmen. A lot of our lineup was sophomores and freshmen and uh, didn't really have that experience to kind of get us over the hump um, to get where we wanted to be. And so the athletes learned a lot about themselves. They learned about, a lot about themselves off the court as well as beach volleyball wise. And uh, you know, we're, we're excited for this year because now we're a lot of upperclassmen. We lost uh, Jamie Walsh last year, who was in our five and uh, you know, did a really good job for us. And uh, so we're, we're returning a lot of athletes and just excited about what this year will bring. So we finished the season last year at 14, coming into the preseason rankings as 15. And our goal is just to keep climbing up that rank. And you know, everyone wants to be at the national championships at the end of the year, and that means us making the top eight. Uh, our athletes have been training so hard on and off the court, in season, out of season. So we're, we're expecting a lot of hard work still, a lot of grit. Um, I expect our athletes to be a lot more mentally tough this year just because of that experience. You know, our goal is to finish in the top eight at the end of the season. All our athletes have goals that are sometimes past college. So like Anea has dreams to go to the Olympics and she's competing for a national team over the summer. Bella and Tegan competed for the U21 this summer. So all of our athletes are, you know, wanting to get to that next level, wanting to train hard. Um, we have a lot of them that played AVP this summer. And you know, that experience is really beneficial for going back to college. There's a ton of respect on this team. There's a closeness. You know, now the majority of our athletes have been here for two to three years. They make comments all the time how they've never felt so close to their teammates as they do this year. And, you know, it's exciting because they want to work hard for each other. They want to have a successful season. And, uh, you know, it just it shows in everything they're doing on and off the court. You know, when I came here, Five years ago, I had never even been to Arizona before they brought me on the interview. I just absolutely fell in love with the campus, the university. Um, you know, we have one of the best student sections in the country, and we expect nothing less when we compete this season. Um, the support we get from the president, all of our administration, the students, 
um, is like no other university and we're just really excited to see what we can do this year. Well, if last year was a learning year, this year the volleyball team is learning how to perform and exceed all expectations, cracking into the top 10. We wish you the best luck of the season. Meanwhile, the game you're tuned in right now here on Fox 10 Extra, it's the Lopes going up against the Aggies right now to score 37-25. And when we come back here on the Lopes Halftime Show, we'll check in with Barry and Scott for highlight scores and much, much more. But we leave you with the Red Panda as we take this quick break. Hoping nothing breaks here. Canyon State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. Curiosity fuels you. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems, you're helping to build a better tomorrow. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Rock a show, stop a beat, get it crunk and wired. Wave your hands, scream loud. Everybody here, get it out of control. The Aggies on top of the Lopes, 37 to 25. We're at the half, Barry Butel, alongside Scott Williams in this game. The uh, first of three on the uh, final homestand for the Lopes uh, before the WAC tournament in Las Vegas. We hope to see you at the Orleans Arena where the Aggies are everything they have been billed to be. 16 game winning streak, second in the nation behind Dayton at 17 straight. This team is on a roll right now. They are tough. I mean, wow. I love the way they play as a unit. I'm very yep. unselfish on both ends of the floor. I mean, they're really tearing the Lopes up inside. 24 points in the paint in that first half. 10 offensive boards. Yep, six uh, to one in regards to the fast break points. Let's take a look at our first half highlights. Brought to you by SRP, and Alessandro Labor has nine points for the Wolves. Yeah, he's been the bright spot. <laughs> Unfortunately, he got two fouls and had to sit out the last three minutes of that first half, but he's been absolutely fantastic. Four for four from the field. You mentioned the nine points. What I got to see him do is get on that glass. Zero rebounds in that first half for the big fella. So Coach Marley, I'm sure, is giving him a thug glass about getting on the glass. But he mentioned it going to the locker room. He's got to pick and roll and get in that painted area. Commonwealth Insurance brings us our first half stats. 45-42, the field goal percentage. The threes, both teams kind of a little uncharacteristic, certainly for the Aggies at 3-15. and 15. The rebounding margin heavy in favor of New Mexico State. Offensive rebounds, yeah, we've 11. seen it. I said wow, 10, they got 11, strong. and then those 24 points in a pink were absolutely huge. So, Lopes got to pick it up on defense, cut off that interior. We talked about one of the keys to victory tonight. Kate will be back with more of our halftime festivities. The crowd loving the Red Panda. Ho, ho, ho! She oh. never misses. Red Panda brought her a game. Have you guys ever heard of Ask GCU? I have. I have heard of it. I have before, yeah. What is your favorite Ask GCU episode? Why well, I should go to GCU. Probably the best food place. You know, we all love food. Yeah, we So do. probably that episode. <laughs> What's the best way to drink a champagne? Go-karts. What is your favorite Ask GCU episode? All of them. Yeah. yeah, thank you. My favorite episode is probably where they asked about the Chick-fil-A line. The breakfast one's pretty good. The one where you guys talk about the best places to have breakfast on campus and everyone said Chick-fil-A. That's the best breakfast I ever had. The Welcome Week episode. <laughs> the Welcome Week one, that one's really clutch. The Welcome Week where Brittany jumps around into people's cars and asks them questions. Remember kids, don't get into people's vehicles. I just really like you guys. I just like it when you're in it. You too. <laughs> 
Tweet hashtag AskTCU to get your question featured. Waking up with peace of mind. Just one of the little perks you get with the SRP Power app. Use it to make conscious decisions on the energy you use every day. No guessing. Everything you need to know. Download the SRP Power app now. SRP, delivering water and power. Red Panda putting on a show here inside GCU Arena at halftime and at the break right now. GCU trailing first place Aggies 37-25. Dan Marley told me the message to his team, you got to go out there with some answers. Stop there, big guy, and obviously keep Labor out of foul trouble so he can turn up the heat in the second half. Right now, he leads all scores with nine points to his name as we look at the first half of these scores brought to you by the streets of New York Pizza. Meanwhile, Carlos Johnson, five points to his name. Isaiah Brown, three points. He's been hot from beyond the arc in the last eight games, nearly shooting 50%. Hopefully, he finds that shot in the second half. And the Lopes look to find an answer to the Aggies. They've yet to lose in conference play. Right now, the Aggies are 13-0. And maybe if you say it enough, a jinx comes into place. Do you believe in those things? We'll see what the Lopes believe in when we get to the second half. Barry and Scott will be underway with more action. We hope you're hungry for Lopes basketball because it's coming your way right after this. Some hot water heater failed. She was pregnant. In-laws were coming. A little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. Crave the night or savor the day. Here we give you all a place to play. Talking Stick Resort, play in style. One more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes. New Mexico State on top of GCU 37 to 25. One player the Lopes need to step up here in the second half is Carlos Johnson. Five points in the opening half, just two of seven from the field. Yeah, I can't really find the range from long distance, just one of four from the field. I like him where he's going to putting his head down and going to the uh, bucket, but that was a big one after a turnover there. <laughs> Kept the Lopes, cut the lead, uh, deficit rather, down to six. I gotta get him going here in this second half. Coach Marley, when Johnson has struggled in the first half, he will throw him the ball down on the block to see if he can get him to operate down there on the post. It has been a watch and win night. A pair of tickets headed to Jacob Dillon in Tucson, Arizona. Congratulations, Jacob. See you at the Orleans Arena. Las Vegas, Nevada, March 11th through the 14th. About 75 from Tucson yesterday on a 10. What was that? You were going 75? I was, I, yeah, I was, I was coming back from Austin, Texas. I, I blew through Las Cruces. Yeah. Uh, I left Texas about 3 o'clock in the morning, so I was delirious when I hit Tucson. I was going 75. It felt like I was going about 35 miles per hour. That is a I've long been, drive. 14 hours on the 10. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of time for yourself. 
you do a lot of I got that satellite radio. What I did, oh, I so yeah, I, yeah, I got satellite radio. Uh, I, I got turned. It, I guess it had turned off my subscription that's expired or something oh, like that. So I, I, I got that. I got that activated, and I listened to um, that Kevin Hart radio station and just laugh for hours. <laughs> that's, that's that comedy station is hilarious. We're underway. Lopes fans remain on their feet, of course, till the uh, home team hits a bucket. Took him a little while in that opening half. Flavor turns, trying to fire. First miss of the night. They went right That's to true. the big fella. Yeah. It was four for four. I will see why that was a good number to call coming out of that locker room. Bryce, short, loose ball. Back out McCann, oh. saved by... Oh, second half, chair. same theme, yeah. getting on that offensive glass, getting those second chance opportunities. Rice, 10 on the shot clock. Moves right, back out, McCann's, looks for three, he can hit. Another loose ball, this time it's picked up by Blackshire, up for Johnson. Out to Blackshire, he motions Johnson, to give him a little bit of... Johnson got too much Man. down there on that block. He, he lifted his guys. arm up, him. used his left, his right arm to try to clear out space. He'd been fine if he'd have kept that right arm and elbow down, but once you start lifting it up to shoulder height, watch this elbow come up right here. The officials yep. are going to call that one. Gilliard is right. Queen back to Gilliard. Bounce pass. McCants kicked out. Gilliard looks to drive baseline. Swoops around. Near side. Long three. That's off the mark. But who's there? Hey, Auro Kolachea. That doesn't go, but they get another rebound. They get a hoop and a harm. Why not? Rice puts it in. Don't mean to beat a dead horse, but if you can't Good defend your, your backboard, you're in for a long night. And just the second and third opportunities rolled that total up now to 14 offensive rebounds. They got more offensive rebounds than they got defensive rebounds in this game. It's hard not to think that a lot of this, obviously, you know, is, is matchups, but man, it's, it's just out working. It's just having some pride. Yeah, I mean, and working, bringing your lunch pail, right? Sure. Uh, and, and that's what we talked about. Uh, in this I you coach home them. cooking it. Well, they're an athletic group. So yeah, right now they're an athletic group that is fired up to play. Yeah. And, and so they're in and, and they're just like you said, they are they are out hustling the lopes for those balls. One in there and they're two that they're just faster to getting to those balls. Right? Labor's trying to do all he can down there. He put a body on one guy and then another guy comes in and snags the ball. Uh oh, Aaron pass. Oh uh, one guy up over the top. I don't know why Laver was shouldn't be feeding Louis Bungai the ball. Probably some better options for scoring. Like the uh, opening half, the uh, Lopes fans having some problems taking a seat. Yeah, well, it's 10 nothing to start this game and. Lopes were able to claw back into it and kept it within striking distance, but it's at 15 now. If they go down 18 to 20 points, I don't, I don't know if, if they got enough to come back and win this basketball being that that far down to this Aggies team. They're just too good. Oro Cochea, McCants, kick back out. Man, ball movement. Green puts it down at the free throw line. That rings around and a rebound again picked up by the Aggies. From the corner, short, rebound. We got Mikey Dixon reaching in. Uh, their bench is fired up. They realize the amount of energy their teammates are playing with, and that becomes infectious. So then anybody else that comes into the game realize, I'm going to have to stay on this floor. i got to play as hard as the guy I just replaced. Green to Gilliard. Quickly in the corner, Queen for three. Smooth as silk. Oh, what nice job finding the guy for the short porch three-point shot. Down to the corner, 6-0-1 to start this second half. 
Johnson looks for three. Short, pushed back out. Queen able to get it. Gilliard. Queen drives, kicks back out. Gilliard, McCants beyond the arc. Swoops around. Oro Kochea kicked back out. Driving. Gilliard floats. Not there. Rebound. Labor pulls it down. That was a must stop. I just felt that that was a must stop defensively right there. As the Aggies are trying to go for the knockout blow here in this first half. Labor. Floater. Short. I think they got Queen underneath there. Boxing out. Is that cool? McCants. Oh, it's McCants. Oh, I'm sorry, it was McCants underneath there. Bungay did a nice job getting himself to the weak side of that glass. And then McCants just rode him out of uh, to the to the baseline when he was up in the air. So good job by Bunga doing a nice job getting on that offensive glass, getting an extra possession. Laver. McCants takes a seat with two personal fouls. Dixon. And by Brown. Bobbitt's going to be called. I like that. Mikey Dixon coming off that high pick and roll can make some good things happen because you got the pop with Laver from behind the three point arc, or Dixon have ability to get to the basket. I'd like to see them set that up where Dixon can come to his strong right hand dribble rather than going back to the left. I think he's better going right than he is left. Johnson leaves for Blackshear. Bobbitt comes out, stops, pops, big rebound. Rice turns and runs, stops. Brown in and out, rebound, Maoro Koachea. Gilliard. Inside, Oro Koachea doesn't go, but the put back does by the Aggies, Rice. Third attempt, they get the tip at the rim, they get it back up and in. 20-point deficit for the Lopes. They got no answers to be able to stop anybody from rebounding Good. that ball. Grief. Bungai got a loose ball. The Bungai's coming in here and giving them some good minutes here. Got a block shot to end the half. Got a chance to get an offensive rebound, and then that one down there, just kind of Johnny on the spot, picked that ball up off the floor to have another chance. But they have got to do a better job defending their backboard. 15-51 to go, 45-25, the Aggies on top. You use the latest technology to treat patients, but your care and compassion is timeless. Advancing your career means helping more patients and providing even more care. Grand Canyon University's online programs in nursing make it convenient for you to become the expert every patient deserves. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Waking up with peace of mind. Just one of the little perks you get with the SRP Power app. Use it to make conscious decisions on the energy you use every day. No guessing. Everything you need to know. Download the SRP Power app now. SRP, delivering water and power. GCU Men's Basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play in a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. And by SRP, delivering water and power. Barry Butel, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth, joining you from GCU Arena in West Phoenix on the campus of Grand Canyon University. And the first place Aggies are showing everybody why they have won 16 in a row. Up to a 45-25 lead here, second half. It took 407 off of the tip for the Lopes to get their first score in the opening half. It's 409 and counting. Offensive rebound margin 18 to 6. Favor of the Aggies. Yeah, they got they got more offensive rebounds than Lopes have total rebounds in this basketball game right now. And they're just doing a, a, a good job on that glass. 
Oh, I'm sure he's going to get these free throws to go in so these Lopes fans can have a seat. Just three of six from the line this season. Louis Bengal. One of those nights. I, just One of those crazy little nights. Bob it. Buchanan. Rice. All right, Crochet. Kick back out. Five on the shot clock. He's got to move. Way back out. He's got to throw it up. He does. Short. Shot clock violation, Buchanan got it off. Well, that's, I mean, that's great defense. I mean, we've seen the Lopes several times tonight to play great defense for 28, 29 and a half seconds, only to give up offensive rebounds. This time, they couldn't give up the offensive rebound because the ball never hit the, the rim. So, I mean, they, they've done the job on the first possession defensively. It's just not being able to get that board has killed them. Kick back out. Well, still looking for their first bucket here in the second half. Swarmed is Labor. Back out. Blackshire drives. Foul. Yeah, block that time. Labor, excuse me, Blackshire does a nice job catching that ball out of the pass out of the post and not settling for the outside shot. It's the Aggies want you to do. They want you to shoot those outside shots. And Blackshire said, I'm just going to drive it right in here and make, get some contact. They're doing a better job getting the Aggies to foul them. They already have more fouls here in the first five minutes and five seconds than they got in the whole first half. The Aggies have 18 more field goal attempts than the Lopes. Johnson stops. Floater. Not gonna happen. Derek Downings are, you know, our stellar stat man here. He sent, you know, let me, reminded me they're 30, hitting 39%. The Yankees, 39%. Yeah, well, if, if you're getting 18 more shots, though, that's how you get that extra advantage. I was shocked by that. Yeah, and they're not killing it from the outside. No. Logan Lopes, initial defense, like we said, it has been good. Right now, really struggling to find anything offensively, though. Carlos Johnson with a tough shot, and then Labor comes back the next time down the floor with a long distance three he couldn't get to go. And not there, Labor pulled down the rebound. See if they can get something in transition. First, uh, first break or secondary break, maybe a pick and roll, pick and pop with Labor. In the corner, Johnson. Oh, he walked. Oh, goodness gracious. Jiminy Perkins, googly, googly. Yeah, it rains and pours sometimes, and you're really struggling like Carlos Johnson was struggling in that first half. And, just haven't visualized that ball going through the basket much that it's real tough to get it going. Little pressure here. The Aggies bring it up. Bob it. Back out. Buchanan takes it back from McCann. Buchanan looking to drive in. Back out to Queen beyond the arc. Leaves from McCann's turns. Does a little pirouette, leaves for Buchanan. High off the glass and a hoop and a harm. Isaiah Brown's going to be called for the foul. Yeah, that's High the, fives all around the Aggies bench. That's the one that will drive Coach Marley mad. That one where the ball is out of the three-point line and is driven from one side of the floor right down the heart of the defense. And then a ticky-tack weak foul uh, on the driver that'll, that actually doesn't cause them to lose control of the basketball, and they're just able to put the ball off of the glass and they get the and one finish. We saw a ton of those when the Lopes coming off of that road trip and just giving up easy and one situations underneath, and they had been working on that a lot in practice, taking on the challenge of that one-on-one -on -one defense, but it just hasn't, uh, it didn't, hasn't shown up here tonight for the, for the Lopes. Remarkable that Utah Valley had the lead late against these Aggies, and it took a banked-in three-pointer by Jabari Rice to win it. Utah Valley 5-9, and nine, and folks can fight! Take a seat! Oh, they're 
dogs are barking. I'm, I'm going to sit down, too. I've been yeah. standing up since yeah. halftime <laughs> waiting for the Lopes to get a score. And, yeah, and I, a could take, I could take a seat as well. Seven minutes it took. Of course, I don't think these Havocs ever sit down, do no, they? they don't. Bounce pass underneath with no doubt about it. Oh, what a oh, great interior that. passing. The Aggies are having some fun tonight. The bench is going crazy. The players are slapping high fives. And why not? They're, 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 they're working so hard. They should enjoy the effort that they're putting in there. It's resulting in some really good basketball. Dixon step back and good. Three. Yeah, the Havocs. They give it 100,000%. Yeah, they brought the energy tonight. Yep. Unfortunately, their lopes are overmatched team, in this one. Team needs to match the intensity, the effort. Drive. Driving. Buchanan off the glass. Dusted. Blackshear. <laughs> Went left hand and kissed it. Yeah, I think Blackshear was anticipating him coming off and going down the right side of that floor, but a little inside out dribble. He gained an advantage, and they are so good at finishing at the rim. Jenkins leaves for Brown. Oh, that was a couple of hops there. Lost the ball. Brown's going to drive. Underneath. Finally a foul. Well, he's pumped up. Look at that. Dixon hits the three. Lopes way behind at the eight. When it comes to school spirit, we do it best. Lopes up. Lopes up. Lopes up. Lopes up from Afghanistan. Hear the thunder. Hear the love. Lopes up. He hit the thunder. Across the beat of desert. To where the mountains touch the sky This is Sanderson Ford country Where Arizona's pride Sanderson Ford country Built on serving you Sanderson Ford Satisfaction in everything we do We're Arizona's pride Sanderson Ford GCU, they give you the tools to find what your purpose truly is. My name is Joseph, and I'm earning my Bachelor of Arts degree at GCU. Here's the thunder in all of us. Come find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Welcome back. A live look inside GCU Arena right now. The score 52 30 Aggies over the Lopes, but there are star power out here at the game. And right now I am joined by no other than the latest addition to the Havocs, Frankie Muniz. And I'm the one in the middle tonight, as I also am joined by Coyote star Christian Fisher. Christian, this is your first time out here. As you're taking in the atmosphere here at GCU Arena, what comes to mind? Yeah, I mean, I've seen uh, all this on social media, and I I can't believe it. This is the first time here, like you said, and this is crazy. I mean. I know I'll be coming back for sure, and I wish I would have known about this way uh, way earlier. And as the Coyotes try to finish off the season strong, making that final push, uh, how does the addition of the crowd being into the game help an athlete, whether it's on the ice or on the court? It's, it's crazy. I mean, you kind of just feed off the energy, and um, I know when we have sold out, you know, games, it's it's more fun to play, and you, you somehow get more energy just because it's you're amped up, you know, you have a good player, you, you score a goal, and you hear all the fans. It, it just gives you more energy, so, um, and you can see it here. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're all fired up to play in front of this every night. Yeah, and we're having fun. We can sit down and take the game to end, guys. But, Frankie, you've been all around town lately. First of all, congratulations. Thank you got you. married, yeah. and uh, I've seen you at Coyotes games. You've obviously been out here at Lopes, honored as a Havoc. What keeps bringing you back to these GC games? I mean, I, I didn't go to school. I didn't go to college. So I don't have a specific tie like that, but I, I love coming to the GCU games. They're so much fun. You know, I just, I don't know, I, I just have so much fun here, and uh, they've kind of welcomed me in, you know, and uh, I, I really enjoy it. So I want to come to every game. We're talking about going up to the, the tournament next uh, next week or in a few weeks, so, so we can watch them there too. So 
All right, well, we all know anything can happen in March, guys, and I'm guessing if the looks want to punch their ticket to the dance, well, they might be having to go through this Aggies team in March as well. Oh, no doubt about that, Kate. No doubt. I, I was I was digging Christian Fisher's hat you were uh, interviewing there. He's uh, wearing a hat from El Dorado Golf Course Golf Club down in uh, Cabo, one of the nicest courses in Cabo. Oh, look I wonder at if you. he's a member. I got to see look if I can this. finagle myself around down there. That is so blatant. El Dorado Golf Course. <laughs> the beautiful El Dorado. Kate, okay, tell, tell him I want to go play golf down there with him. Yeah. That's Scott right. Williams is challenging you <laughs> to a game of golf. You know, after the season, so after a playoff run, we'll see what we can do. Yeah, when, whenever you let me know the time and place, I'm a, I'm a two handicap. So. Oh, oh my. Well, that just means I get lots of strokes then. I'm going to play as a 16. GCU <laughs> has a great golf course. Yeah, speaking oh, of March, that's when the Coyotes will look to ratchet up as they push towards the end of the regular season in early April. Hopefully, get their goaltending. Back healthy. Kemper looks like he's back now, and Taylor Hall can help. Uh, you know more about. Yeah, you know about those. Huh? I I don't I haven't followed the hockey a whole lot this year, but I know they were doing really good right around the All Star All Star break. So. Yeah, I'll I'll some injuries. All these hockey players play play golf. Good. I played at uh, with Brett Hole a that? lot up at Gaza Ranch too, right? in Idaho. Yeah, he's like a one or a two. I, I've never seen a guy hit a three wood as good as Brett Hole could hit a three wood. Dan Quinn was uh, a former player that used to uh, win a lot of tournaments after uh, his playing days were over. But you're right. I don't know what it is. It's got I something with that slap shot, eye. that slap shot motion. Yeah, to getting that that stick back yeah. down to the, the puck, but translate getting that club back down to the ball. I, I, I'm a, and they hit it a country mile, too. Yeah, Not only just hit it good. Crush it. Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky's not that great, though. Not, not in golf. Not golf. Not in, no, not, he's not that great. He is called he's the about great a, one. about a 14, 15 <laughs> handicap at golf. Coach Jans, man, does he ever crack a smile? I think he probably saves that for the labor, put it home with authority. Oh, oh, oh. A little bit of attitude there. Yeah! The well, red biscuits on that one. The Lopes needed that a little bit earlier here, though. I love this. That's one thing I've always said, the Lopes are so good at these B.O.B.s, these baseline out of bounds plays. Gets the Aggies as half step slow. That's put them on a poster, that dunk. Quick ball movement. Tried to put it in there, McNair, but it doesn't go. He tried to return the favor on Labor, didn't he? Long distance, picked up by Blackshear. Some players like McNair in the game. You see a lot of minutes, which is about eight a game, but he's seen some extended time here with this lead. Yeah, he got that big lead. They're trying to rest some players down the stretch, make sure that they're fresh for the last couple games of the regular season on into the tournament. But one thing Kate was, was right about, sometimes you can whoop a team at 20 plus points during the regular season and you face them in the tournament and you get beat. I, I, I told you the story. I was on a North Carolina team that went 14 and 0 in the regular season. They beat NC State by an average of 20 points and we lost to them in the championship game to spoil the our, 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 our perfect season. Underneath Labor again with the reverse kiss off the glass. I would say that, that I, I could see how you say that, but it kind of did that narrative a year ago. <coughs> well, maybe the second time's the and, charm. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, last time they did get beat by 30 in the championship game. That the was no point. Pay much attention to that. Well, I tell you what, you know, we we were a younger North Carolina team. We had a, our, our, our Keeney Smith was our senior, but for the most part, we were a pretty young team. J.R. Reed was a freshman. I was a freshman, and we came in thinking, oh, they're going to roll over for us. We're going to beat us by 20. They upset Duke to get to the championship game. Also, we weren't ready to play. And Labor's come out of this timeout. He's been ready to play. He got three, six quick points since the last break. And 15 points on a nine on seven to ten shooting. So you know, that's one guy that's never going to quit. Mentioned him becoming the second all-time leading scorer now for the GCU men's D1 basketball team. Rafe Curtis in the game. Yeah, Rafe again. Yeah, Rafe started the last game out on the road. Johnson's not in the game. 
Yeah, he might hit calling off the dog. We're realizing it down by 22. We're at eight minutes to go. No sense getting anybody hurt. Last two games will be important as they still fight for a playoff seat or a tournament seating. I don't want to put undue pressure on a player, but Carlos Johnson pretty much carried the load in the first two games of the Western Athletic Conference tournament a season ago, and uh, they can ill afford to have five points and uh, sitting on the bench for Carlos Johnson here down the stretch. Yeah. I mean, he's got to help lead this team alongside Alessandro Labor, and he's got to take a little bit more of a leadership, take a little bit more of a... I mean, he's, a, he's a, an upperclassman, and he's got to lead this team. Yeah. He's got to rally these guys. Yeah, and, and lead them offensively. You don't always have to have a, a great night offensively. It would be nice, but he's got to do some of the other things. Right. Zero points, zero rebounds in the first uh, half as well. Didn't have any assists. So if you're not scoring, you got to do other things to get launch other guys to get them going, and, and he wasn't able to do that. Now, this Aggies team, they're a different breed. Right. It, it, it's tough probably start hanging his head a little bit but you're right you got to have that mental toughness when you're not going well for you to make sure that you get the other four guys fired up make sure they're still playing hard to compete Gilliard with a floater rebound oak button under eight minutes to go brown brings it up near side leaves for blackshirt Curtis. Pass was about to be picked off by Terrell Brown. It goes out of bounds. Timeout on the floor. 56-36. The Aggies have been in control of this game from the opening tip as they come in here and try to win their third straight here in Phoenix and uh, their 17th straight overall. As uh, you talk about momentum going into a tournament, is there, besides Dayton, I don't know if there's a team in the country that is on a roll like New Mexico State is right now. No, it really isn't. I mean, you, Baylor was playing good, and they yep. got up seat by Kansas. But the way this team is playing, their laser focus, I don't see anybody beating them until they get to the big dance. But like I say, you never know. You could always have an off night. Looks to finally find the third time to be the charm in the, in the conference tournament. Well, one guy, one shining star, at least here tonight. And He's had his issues against New Mexico State. Is Alessandro Labor. He's got 15, you mentioned. He's 7 of 10 from the field. Yeah, he, he's done a nice job of mixing up the outside game and the inside game. And we said that was one of the things he'd have to do. He, he, he has a really tough defender on him and plays him physically. He only had five points last time versus New Mexico State. So you know he wanted to have a better showing tonight, and he did. Well, for every three-point shot throughout the season that GCU makes, Canyon State Credit Union gracious enough to make a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. For more information, go to giving.gcu.edu. Great program of Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. It is a uh, log jam underneath New Mexico State. In the Western Athletic Conference, the Lopes no doubt will drop to seven and seven. We got UTRGV here on Saturday. They close out against Bakersfield, so that game on Saturday is critical. We hope that you uh, visit GC Arena, support the Lopes as they close it out the regular season. Seattle U is right there as well, and then you look at KC at six and seven, Bakersfield at five and eight. Surprisingly, Utah Valley five and nine. Yeah, they, they, they gave these guys them. everything they could handle here. The Aggies, as I mentioned, had to hit that bank three-pointer by Rice to, to win it. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, there about. you go. There you That's go. That's what I'm I, talking about. You never right. know any given night. I thought tonight was going to be a close one, too. I, I, see the, I thought the Lopes would be down to the half and down big in the second half, but that they would make a run. I just didn't see them down by 20. <laughs> Browns shot in and out. Buchanan brings it up. You know, Chicago State played New Mexico, New Mexico State close for a half as well before falling, uh, you know, down and losing by double digits. But it can be done, but it won't be done if you can't control the rebound. If you're going to get smashed on the glass, you've got no chance against this team. Opo puts it home with authority. He just stepped up and shot it. Yeah, Bryce Opo, he... You know, this is a guy we talked about him at the beginning of the season. He was supposed to be red-shirted yep. and all of a sudden found himself getting minutes. He had nine points off the bench. The only nine points off the bench for the Lopes at Utah Valley. So he's gaining confidence as this season 
has been progressing. He's getting better and better. Blackshear brings it up. Okpo bounce pass, Labor tries baseline, reverse, off the glass. Yeah, at, at what point in time do you, you know, think about sitting Labor down? I, I, I know that coach has got hit. I got to have somebody out there that can store that ball, but if anything was to, to happen to Labor, you know, he's already got wearing a sleeve on that right knee. He's played 30 minutes tonight, got himself a nice scoring outing. Maybe it might be time the next time out to say, okay, Time for you to ice those legs down. Tip back, Rice. <laughs> Hook pole in front of the Wolves bench. Kicks back out. Gertis moves right, bounce pass to Brown, and a nice one. Hoop and a harm. Oh, that was beautiful. That was well executed by Rafe Gertis. That's one where they. They've gone to the dribble handoff two, three times, and now they think they're going to go to the dribble handoff again, and then the, your teammate just snaps it off and goes back door. Ray Gertis with one hand. Great nice pass, bounce pass. Right? Yeah, Beautiful. bounce pass. Came right up, right where it needed to be. Yep, right away from the defender's arms and hands where he can't get to it, and he brought the ball right up where Brown can pick it up off the ground and go in and lay it up. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to finish that off with the three-point plays. He missed the free throw. Loads of struggle from the free throw line tonight. Five of nine. Uncharacteristic. They're one of the top, I mean, in the top 50 in the nation from the three-point line, and they have really struggled here. McCants Brown playing catch. Moves right this time. Buchanan. Possession arrow, jump ball. But just, just take that one possession there offensively for the Aggies. Hey, how quickly they can get the ball from the top uh, of the floor, out above the three-point line, and down the, down a lane, either the right lane or the left lane, before the defense has a chance to come over and help out. Quick shot by Rice. Money. Oh. <laughs> they are deep. Rice with 16. Leading the way. Brown stops. Floater short. Rice with the rebound. Under five to go. Quickly up. Picked off. Labor. Okpo got a hand on it as well. Yeah, nice job by Okpo keeping back in transition after that missed shot. I mean, he didn't he didn't try to jog between the three-point lines. He sprinted between the three-point lines, got in position, turn around to knock that ball away. Oro uh -oh, takes a seat. Bobbitt comes back in. Can'ts after he twisted that ankle up. Still on the court with a commanding lead. The Thunder just gave a, wow. the Havoc section a sh popcorn shower here. <laughs> About three rows. That's very nice. Three wasn't? rows got drenched in buttery popcorn. Oak Pope called for the foul. Actually, McCants. So Oak Post is going to go to the line. <laughs> that one, one more time there, coming from the second level. It was a sniper thunder? attack. Yeah, Thunder up on the second level with a whole plastic bag full of popcorn. That's not nice. Smells good, though. I can smell it up here. It's making me hungry. Oh, yeah, I'm really hungry. Stop it at the convenience store on the way back for a block of that white cheddar. That's the oh, stuff the I white like. White cheddar, you like that? Oh, yeah. Only got about a thousand calories in the bag. So, so good. <laughs> Why does all the good tasting stuff have so many calories? Can anybody figure this out? Cheesecake. Cheesecake doesn't have any calories. Cheesecake doesn't? No. Are you kidding me? You, never, you didn't know that? Oh, my goodness. What have I done? I, I thought I heard there was fat now. In the corner again. Doesn't go. Curtis got a hand on it. 
348 to go. The Aggies on top, 65-43, looking to extend their unbeaten streak to 17. Do you like to create, collaborate, and solve problems? At Grand Canyon University, you can earn your advanced degree in computer programming, computer science, or information technology. Explore the world of data science or business analytics and change the way businesses operate. Embrace your patriotism and study in cybersecurity or earn your Java certificate. Now's the time to make a change by building a career in one of these high demand technology programs. Enroll today. Find your purpose at gcu.edu. So one key component that makes the Waste Management Phoenix Open so successful is Cox Business. Over 700,000 people are gonna come enjoy TPC Scottsdale from digital TV to digital phones to security, and most importantly, that free Wi-Fi all over this property. We simply couldn't do it without a partner like Cox Business. We're grateful, we're thankful, it's a hole in one. Aggies have led from the opening tip. 65-43, 3.48 to go. Saturday, the Lopes close, or, uh, continue this homestand. They close out the weekend against UTRGV. Team they're battling for positioning in the conference behind the Aggies. Kate will join you on Fox 10 Extra at 5.30 with the Lopes pregame show. Tip off at 6. Then they'll close out the regular season here on their home court a week from Saturday against Bakersfield. Coach Barnes brings in this squad, 5.30 pregame with Kate, and a 6 p.m. tip before the WAC tournament, Las Vegas. The Orleans, where apparently Frankie Muniz is, uh, is headed. Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking about going, going up there with myself. Yeah. yeah, the UTRGV right now is struggling with Bakersfield. They're now 29-17 with five and a half minutes to go in the first half. Crazy. So they may be coming off a loss. The Lopes coming off a loss. Both teams will be fired up to get a win. Oh, I'm sorry, but right out of that break, Sean Williams drains it. John seeing some minutes. Averages about 15 a game. Okpo. Brown. Brown drives. There's a nice, decisive move by Brown to take that one hard to the hole. And this was a, an opportunity for him to go ahead and try to finish at the basket. He has the ability to shoot the floater, and I think sometimes he relies on that floater a little too much rather than just driving that one all the way in there and saying, you're going to block my shot, I'm going to get the layup, or you're going to foul me. And I, I like when he's got that mentality that I'll just take it all the way in there, especially in a game where you've been kind of struggling offensively to get any points. you got to go in there and just say, I accept the challenge. Let's just see what happens. McCants has four personal fouls. Aggies bring it up. Bobby. Rice. Plays catch with Buchanan. Rice loses a handle on the floor. Oak Pole leaves for Isaiah Brown. Three minutes to go. Brown in the paint. Stops, pops, good. Isaiah Brown. Isaiah Brown starting to heat up back to back. Drives to the basket. Got nine points now in this basketball game. Bobbitt, Rice, Williams. Step back. Loose ball. Good job by Rafe Curtis that time. He had to fight through a screen, pick a player up on the other side as he's driving, recovering. He's a lot longer than he. Uh, appears out on the floor sometimes. He's got a real long wingspan and is able to challenge that shot without fouling. Raver's going to check out. One guy checks back in. McNair in for the Aggies. Rice will take a seat. I like what Coach Marley did right there. He spent a little extra time with Laver coming by the sidelines. 
patting them on the back end, people talking to him, just said, hey, listen, don't worry about this one. We got another big one on Saturday. Or something to that effect, I'm sure. Good work tonight. We'll come back and get them next time. Again, the Aggies grab the rebound. And that, that's just that's just good coaching right there. Is a, I can't do anything about this one, but I can make sure my player's ready to come back and perform the next time he puts on a dry uniform. McNair kicks back out. Shot clock violation. McNair gets the uh, stare down. Man, he's an intense man. 20 point lead, coach. Come on. Coaching them up on that end, too. You can't make those mistakes, right? It, no, the farther <laughs> they go, the more games they win. And... Yeah, I mean, this, this Aggies team, I mean, they're setting records. You know, every time they take the floor and they get a conference win in the whack, I mean, they're, they're, they're a tough bunch. So, is that? You, you, you don't, you, there's no sense in crying over spilt milk. This is this one's over and done with. You, you, can, you can learn something from how they approach this game and how hard they play. I, I know that we talked about it in the teaser game. They're not as talented as this team. But they got outworked by this team that you, you made a point to, to say that in the first half. And, and that's that's something that you can't let happen. You, you can go out there and compete. All those second chance points, those offensive rebounds, those are those types of things that you, you can stop. You were playing great defense and you give up a second you know, third offensive rebound, that, that means that they're outworking you. And then you can take pride in that. So you can learn from what they did so next time you go on the floor, you make sure it doesn't happen. I just, you can't coach effort though, right? I mean, can you coach effort? I mean, you gotta, that, that comes within, that's an intestinal fortitude. I mean, that's a, that's an attitude within the player. That's a, that's, 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 that's a play, pride that's factor. That's the players that's, getting together and having some leadership in that locker room and saying, we will never ever let that happen again. Uh, and you gotta have leaders in that locker room that will do that. Because the coach can draw up the plays and put you in the right spot offensively, but when that shot goes up, now it's now it's on the players to go out there and, and, uh, and go get that ball. Bobby. Lucky to just shoot. What's our stat guys last night? What's Jared's last name? He's, over here, he's over here flashing these Donuts. stats that the Lopes are on a 7-0 run. Excuse me? He must be crazy right now. They are, actually, <laughs> over the last two minutes, 10 seconds. Oh. Uh, Try spelling that, Donnans. Try to. No, I won't even take a yeah. stab at that one. I say Brown for sure, Brown at the line. Oh, I think I might have jinxed it. Oh, I'm sure you did. Blame this one on Scott. <laughs> well, one thing that didn't, that didn't help at all is that. Before the game, I normally try to go out there and I shoot a half-court shot. Yeah. And every time I make that half-court shot, the Lopes have never lost. Well, tonight, I, I tried 10 of them tonight to make sure I could try to get one down. I couldn't make not one for 10. So I, I will take a little credit for not being able to do my part. Hope these guys are okay. They, they get twisted up going up yeah. for that board. That was effort right there, Isaiah. Is that Brown going yep. in there? Yeah. Hey. Fifth year senior. Yeah, look at that. Look at those guys out there battling for that ball. I like that. Oh, it's left arm right Final minute there. of the game, and they're out there scrapping. Just needed more of that in the first half. Under a minute to go. Wolves are going to drop to seven and seven in the conference. One guy underneath. Stopped by McNair. McNair sprints up the court. Buchanan kicks out in the corner. Off the side of the backboard. Oak pole leaves for Mikey Dixon. Dixon drives. Little floater. Good. That should do it. I don't believe. Aggies will shoot anymore as the shot clock has been turned off on this one. They'll, they'll take this one back to Las Cruces with them. They, they earned this victory out here on the road.
So we'll dribble things out. The uh, Aggies will go to 23 and 6, 14 and 0 in the conference, 8 and 3 away from Las Cruces. And sweep the uh, season series against the Lopes. The final score, 67 to 53. We'll step aside. Wrap things up from GC Arena in Phoenix after we take this timeout. So one key component that makes the Waste Management Phoenix Open so successful is Cox Business. Over 700,000 people are gonna come enjoy TPC Scottsdale from digital TV to digital phones to security, and most importantly, that free Wi-Fi all over this property. We simply couldn't do it without a partner like Cox Business. We're grateful, we're thankful, it's a hole in one. Do you like to create, collaborate, and solve problems? At Grand Canyon University, you can earn your advanced degree in computer programming, computer science, or information technology. Explore the world of data science for business analytics and change the way businesses operate. Embrace your patriotism and study in cybersecurity or earn your Java certificate. Now's the time to make a change by building a career in one of these high demand technology programs. Enroll today. Find your purpose at gcu.edu. The Aggies win it 67 to 53. The Lopes drop to seven and seven while the Aggies remain unbeaten. They've already clinched the conference, but they've extended their winning streak to 17. Uh, they came in just uh, one game back. The uh, Dayton Flyers had won 17 coming into uh, action tonight. And for all intents and purposes, this team is, uh, man, they are hitting on all cylinders. I mean, they are hit, they hit fifth gear right off the opening tip. Yeah, it, and it wasn't like they were even that great offensively no, tonight. I was they were just out hustling the yeah. Lopes. I mean, five guys, it seemed like there were six on the floor yeah. where they were constantly getting the offensive rebound or loose balls or getting out in the break, moving that basketball around with precision. Let's uh, check out our Canyon State Credit Union player of the game. Canyon State Credit Union committed to you, Alessandro Labor. Yeah, 17 points, 8 of 11 from the field. Did a good job in both halves of the game tonight. He was the one guy that was consistent. They just couldn't get enough offense out of Car Carlos Johnson tonight and some of the other guys. One, I love that one right there because that was after a hard drive. It's good footwork to get that little left hand hook, little pick and roll down the middle, and that was a wonderful play. Signature dunk after that baseline out of bounds play, the little chicken wing get free along that baseline. One more time underneath with some good footwork, going to the other side of the rim for a bucket. Let's revisit our Sanderson Ford three keys to the game tonight. Couldn't close that border. Too many points in the paint. Well, Couldn't make anything open. from the outside tonight. Just 20% from three-point line and just never really did enough to start this basketball game in either half. A 10-0 run in the first half, and it took him about six minutes to get going in the second half. 26 more field goal attempts for New Mexico State. That is just a hustle. It's a hustle. backbreaker. Backbreaker is right. As the... Uh, Lopes will uh, put this one to bed as quickly as possible. Bakersfield is leading UTRGV, but the upcoming schedule has the Vaqueros coming in here on Saturday. Kate Longworth will have the pregame show at 5.30, tip off at 6. Then the uh, Lopes close out the regular season a week from Saturday against Bakersfield, same 6 p.m. tip. And then it's off to the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada for the uh, conference tournament. But that'll do it from here at GCU Arena, where tonight, the Lopes lose to the Aggies 67-53. Please join us again this Saturday, 5.30, for the Lopes pregame show. They host the Vaqueros. But until then, for Kate Longworth, Scott Williams, and her entire crew, I'm Barry Butel, wishing you a wonderful night.